The following is a special Wayne Hills Television Sports Presentation. Hello and welcome to Wayne Valley High School for the showdown of Wayne between your Wayne Hills Patriots and the sure. Wayne Valley Indians. I'm John Vitas alongside Anthony Scadillo and Joe Rapp. Guys, let's get right into it. This atmosphere is crazy. We're here an hour before the game. The bleachers are almost full. There's people tailgating, no joke out there. If people are just so pumped for this game. It says a lot about the town. Everyone's going to be watching tonight. They're expecting close to 6,000 people, I've heard. So first question. This atmosphere is crazy. How do the players put this out of their minds and focus on tonight's game? Well, John, you remember in the state championship game in a few years ago when Wayne Hills won, the, it was the same atmosphere. There were there was thousands of people and there was yelling and screaming going on both sides, chants from either side. And you know what? They, when they're on the field, it leaves their head and they just play the game and that's all you can do. You have to let it go in one ear and out the other. Well, John, ever since they got the schedule last year or before the season, they've thought of this game besides, of course, St. Joe's next Friday. But I have, to, I have to agree with Anthony. When they get on the field, they don't think about anything else but beating Valley. Now, Wayne Hills has a lot of weapons. We know that. But Pete Savistano is the weapon for Wayne Valley. He's a starting quarterback. He's a dual threat guy. He can throw, run the football, and he's the guy Wayne Hills is going to be targeting all night. Now, Wayne Hills is starting Nick Massey on, at linebacker for the first time tonight. Their defense has been great all year. Their defense is great every year. But Savistano is a big weapon. What does the defense have to do to slow him down? Well, that's exactly it, John. The weapon, the only weapon. That's all they have right now. And you know, they're going to attack that. They're going to blitz every single down. They're going to attack the quarterback so he rushes throws, and our secondary is going to have to make plays. I have to agree with Anthony right here. They have to rush rush the quarterbacks to give the running back the ball so the, that's the only way they're going to score points because their defense is way too good. Now, on the offensive side of the ball for Wayne Hills, obviously the star player is Mike Quinn, the quarterback. Now, Valley has a huge defensive line, and their defense is solid overall. What does Quinn need to do to this defense in order to win and put points on the board? You know, he has to relax. He has a great offensive line We're filled with all-state players up and down. And, you know, he just has to relax in the pocket, you know, and do what he normally does. You know, wait for his guys to get open. Don't force throws because then, you know, picks happen. Anthony's dead on on this one. He's just got to wait in the pocket. He's going to have all the time in the world. He's got to wait for the wide receivers to run their routes and just throw them the ball, and they're going to catch it. Now, in big games like this, a lot of times key performances come from unexpected places. So if you had to pick one guy tonight that needs to step up for Wayne Hills for them to win this football game, who would it be and why? Well, my key player is going to be Tim Divers. I mean, field position could, you know, determine the victory tonight. And, you know, all three of his punts this year, which have been for a total of 124 yards, have landed inside the 20. And he has four touchbacks out of 16 kickoffs. You know, that's a great stat. And if he could keep that up and keep them inside their own, you know, territory, that's, that's, a, that's really big. Well, my key player is very unexpected. Well, no, it's expected. Just kidding. BD9, Brian Dowling. This team runs with Brian Dowling, literally. I mean, he scored eight touchdowns in these first two games. He's played great, and if he plays great today, they're going to win. You guys both pick great guys, but I'm going to go with the starting wide receiver, Max DiCarvalo, number 11. He had a great game last week against West Milford, had over 100 yards receiving two touchdowns. And Mike Quinn's going to need to throw the ball. They have to be a two-dimensional offense tonight. It can't be the BD Express show all day. So Quinn's going to have to make plays. They're going to run a lot of play action tonight. So I think if... D. Carvalho can step up like he did last week and make plays, their offense is going to be unstoppable. Now, the big question, your prediction for tonight's game, the papers have it at 
14-13 Wayne Hills. Who wins this game and maybe a score? John, 14-13 is ridiculous. Wayne Hills has been training for this for the past two years. As soon as they saw the schedule was going to be like this, this this is going to be a, a complete annihilation of Wayne Valley. I mean, if they're within 35 points, I'll be surprised. They have been training for this day a long time, and they're going to come out, pound it right in their face. Well, Anthony, don't you agree that Valley's been waiting for this game a long time? I think they're going to put some points on the board. I do think Wayne Hills is going to come out with this game 41-14. Wayne Valley is pumped for this game, like Joe said. So I have no doubt that they're going to keep it somewhat close in the first half. They're going to play Wayne Hills tough like they did two years ago at Giant Stadium. You can see behind us, these fans are here and ready. Hills doesn't have as many fans as th to this point, at least. I mean, both sides are going to be going crazy tonight. But Valley is so pumped for this game. Not that Hills isn't. But I think they're going to keep it close. I say 10-0 at halftime, maybe even 7-0. My final score, I'm saying a repeat of the championship game. I'm going to go with 27-7 for the final score. So that does it for our on-field pregame show. We'll be back with the opening kickoff after this. They fake it to the up man and they toss it right to Tom DiBianca. DiBianca has room to run. Moving down the right side, 10, 5, touchdown, Tom DiBianca. His second touchdown of the game. Whoa, can he move? Hello and welcome back to Wayne Valley High School for today's regular season matchup between the Wayne Hills Patriots and the Wayne Valley Indians. I'm John Vitas, once again here with Anthony Scadillo and Joe Rapp. Now I said regular season matchup, but it certainly does not feel like it. The town of Wayne is here in force for this game. Both sides of the bleachers are packed. We're almost ready for the opening lineups, but Anthony, the first question I asked is the linebackers for Wayne Hills. They're a great group of guys every year. Now tonight, Nick Massey's making his first start of the season, number two. Savistano is going to be running all night because that's what he does best. His completion percentage so far this year is 39%. So passing is not his thing. He's going to run the ball. Valley runs a spread offense. How are the linebackers of Wayne Hills going to have to read the, what Savistano is doing and the motion in the backfield? Well, John, that's what, that's what watching film is all about. They've been watching film all week on what, what Wayne Valley does and you know, and they've been preparing for this all off season in the summer and training and lifting in the winter. This is what it comes down to. I mean, Massey's coming off an injury, but he's been ready. You know, he trains, you know, in the winter and, and goes through the triples in the summer to be ready for what, if he gets into an injury, he's ready to come into this game and play like any other linebacker would. So you know what, they've been waiting for this day a long time. Well, the linebacker's job, John, is to tackle the quarterback. And you don't think the linebackers have momentum to tackle Savistano? They definitely do. We are about ready to welcome the Wayne Hills Patriots here to Wayne Valley Stadium. They're about to walk in, and all the Wayne Hills fans are on their feet already. This is going to be great. As you see, Wayne Hills taking the field now, led by number 80, Matt DeBlock. And both of these teams are so psyched for this game. There were people tailgating here from four o'clock. It's now seven. Brandon Jacobs is here because Trevor Jacobs, the running back for Wayne Hills who moved here from New Orleans in the off season, is making his season debut. He was hurt for the first two games. What role, if any, do you see him having here tonight? Well, depending on how his knee is healed, I mean, that's, that's going to have a major factor. But the fact that Brandon Jacobs is here shows that we have that competitive edge over Wayne Valley. I mean. Uh, if it's not on our home territory, then we bring home with us. I think Adrian Peterson is better. Well, you know what? It's still an NFL running back here at a high school football game in Wayne, New Jersey. And that says a lot about this game. As you see, Wayne Hill is now at the center of the field. And Wayne Valley is about ready to enter. And you'll hear a loud roar from the Valley side. We're going to have to be talking over this crowd all night because they are going to be absolutely crazy. So, Anthony, the first two games we saw just complete blowouts. Wayne Hills destroyed West Essex in the first game in the pouring rain. And so I think it's important to add that both teams played their first game two weeks ago in pouring rain. Hills won 42-7 over a good team. Valley lost 2-0 to Clifton. That's an embarrassing score. And then last week, both teams with impressive wins. Hills won by several touchdowns over West Milford. Valley won over Montclair, who was a good team. So, I mean, both teams are coming in off major wins. But the talent levels, both teams are great teams. 
Valley was 7-3 and three last year. They lost in the first round of the state playoffs. So both teams are great teams, but talent level, where do you think Valley stands in comparison to Hills? John, I, I want to throw these stats at you. Over the course of the first two games, Brian Dowling has 263 rushing, rushing yards and seven touchdowns and averaging 131 and a half yards per game. Michael Quinn, the quarterback, has had 325 passing yards and five touchdowns. When you have this kind of production from your junior running back and senior quarterback in the first two games, how do you lose? You know, honestly, the difference is experience. Valley lost a lot of people last year to graduation. And this year, we have a lot of returning seniors, and that's going to be a key factor in this. Well, obviously, from Anthony's stats, this proves that they obviously work harder than Valley. I, I've seen them train. They work harder than any other school I've ever seen. As you see now, the Wayne Valley Indians about to run through the path of band and cheerleaders, and the other side is going absolutely nuts. But guys, to add some more stats to the equation, last year, Valley was 7-3 coming off an 11-1 season where they lost to Hills in the 2007 state finals at Giant Stadium. Everyone remembers that game. That was the last time Hills and Valley matched up in a football game. This is just the fourth time in the history of high school football that the two crosstown rivals have hooked up. The first time was in the 1991 state championship where Valley won. I believe the game was here at Valley. And in the 2001 state semifinals, Hills won that one. And then the decider out of the best of three was, of course, two years ago, the 2007 state finals where Hills trounced Valley by a score of 27-7. But Valley's a solid team, like I said. They're 20, I'm sorry, 35-8 and eight over the last four years. So they are definitely a force in high school football. But, of course, you can't go without mentioning Wayne Hills' 54-game winning streak, which they bring in here tonight. They're putting it on the line against a good Valley team. But tonight we get them 55. And if they get 55, that'll put them all alone in second place in the history of New Jersey high school football for a winning streak. They'll be just 10 back or a nine back of the record, which is 64. And if they win the state championship ye this year, that would put them over the record. So obviously this could be a record breaking year for Wayne Hills. But just to throw some more stats out here, Mike Quinn has more yards per game than Savistano does all year. I mentioned before, Savistano has a 39% completion percentage. So if you're Wayne Hills' defense, as you see the captain's ready for the coin toss now, if you're Wayne Hills' defense, knowing that Savistano is not the best thrower with the football, does that help you key off now on their running game and help them stop the two-headed monster in Brandon Castles and Greg Laniv? John, it's, it's going to come down to this. How much are they going to put on the line? I mean, you're going to have you know, your regular four down linemen and then how many are you going to put extra? How many, how many guys are you going to blitz? How many guys are going to be attacking Savage down on every down? And that's going to determine if he's able to get out of the pocket, you know, get some yards, get into the secondary, make something happen, or if we're going to stop him before that. Well, John and Anthony, you guys both agree with me that Savage down has obviously worked on his throwing com coming into this week. I think he'll just be prepared for the run or pass. We're about ready for the national anthem here at Wayne Valley High School. This is going to be the quieted it gets for a while. So enjoy it as you see Wayne, uh, both squads now with their helmets off, ready to go for the Star Spangled Banner, played by the Wayne Valley Band. We are just about ready to go here at Wayne Valley. The captains will meet at midfield for the coin toss. The captains for Wayne Hills are quarterback Mike Quinn, lineman Ryan Salerno, along with senior linebacker and fullback James DeLectis, 
and starting tight end and safety, Matt to block. Your captains for Wayne Valley are all seniors as well. Quarterback and Mr. Everything, Pete Savistano, number three, <laughs> alongside lineman Brandon Castlebono, and linebacker and offensive lineman Anthony Perez, along with someone else who I'm not quite sure at the moment. So the atmosphere is crazy, Anthony, like I said. Just thousands of people, they're predicting 6,000. There was 13,000 at the championship game two years ago, so it could be upwards of eight, 10,000. So this is certainly a big night for the town of Wayne. I mean, it's really the culmination of a ath youth athletic career for these kids. I mean, they've been playing sports in Wayne their whole life, not just football. Playing for PAL Boys Club. I mean, we've played with kids from both sides here. So, I mean, it's, it's more than just a football game for this town. I mean, these kids are gonna have emotions in this game that they don't wouldn't normally. They're playing their friends. They hang out with these kids all the time. They know each other, so it's just a huge game. No one's gonna overlook this one because next week Wayne Hills at St. Joe's, which is just the, the biggest game of the year. But I think it's great for Hills that they play Valley the week before because they're not gonna overlook this game. Normally, a, the week before a big game would be a trap game, but that's not gonna be the case. John, do you think, because there's a lot of people here, it'll make the players step up their game? You know what, I think it will for the guys that are going to be primetime performers, as Dick Vitale would say. But at the beginning, there's going to be a lot of butterflies, in my opinion. There's no question about it. A lot of these kids haven't played on a stage this big since last year's state championship game. And most of these kids didn't have a role in last year's state championship game. So, I mean, for guys like Quinn, Salerno, Tuminello, I don't think this is going to fa phase them one bit. But for juniors, guys like... James Hogan, Massey, maybe even Dowling because he's a junior, and Pekarski. There's a lot of inexperience on this Hills team and Valley as well. I mean, both got, both teams are starting a ton of juniors. So there's going to be butterflies on both sides to start off. It'll be interesting to see if anyone blows the coverage early and if either of these teams can make a big play and take advantage of the butterflies. It'll be huge. But here we go. We're ready to go here at Wayne Valley. Hills will receive to start the game. Brian Dowling and James Hogan are back to receive the kick for the Patriots. Matt Dietz will take the kickoff, the junior kicker for Valley. One for two on the season on kickoffs. So here we go, Hills Valley, the grudge match. The 2009 version this time. It's the regular season, but it doesn't feel like it. Dietz is set and ready to kick it away in front of a huge crowd here at Wayne Valley. Dowling and Hogan are ready to run it back. John, I don't know about you, but it seems like there's more Hills fans here than there are Valley. I don't know, and it's stacked on both sides. The crowd is enormous. We haven't seen anything like it. These fans are so antsy to see this game get started. They've been waiting for this all season, the whole off season. People have highlighted this game from the very beginning. And here we go. Dietz is ready to kick it away. It is a low bouncing kick. Will be fielded by Brian Dowling at the 15. He cuts it to the left of the far sideline, bounces it outside across the 30, and taken down at about the 33-yard line. So that's where Wayne Hills will start their first drive on offense. And now let's meet the starting lineups for your Wayne Hills Patriots. Mike Quinn, number 12. Brian Dowling, number 9. Nick Massey, number 2. Max DiCarvalho, number 11. Michael Dries, number 28. Matt DeBlock, number 80. Bruce Monte, number 54. Brian Salerno, number 55. Corey Mitchell, number 65. Nick Tuminello, number 64. Senior quarterback number 12, Mike Quinn, leads Hills into the huddle on first and 10 from their own 34-yard line. Max Carvalho split wide right. I formation for Hills to start it off. Quinn, play action, rolls right, he's gonna run. Has a game at the 35, gets to the 40, near sideline 50, and runs out of bounds at the 47-yard line. A nice run by Mike Quinn on first down, and Wayne Hills moves the chains on the very first play. Hey, you see, John, you know, people get through the inside, and get, you know, Quinn had the vision to go to the outside so that nobody was there because he had somebody going downfield. That's a 20-yard run for Quinn on first down, and Hills is already in Valley territory. It's been a great first two plays for Hills. Dowling gave him good field position to start off their drive, and Quinn just had 20 more yards. Great job, Hills. You gotta help. You gotta also credit. The butterflies of Matisse, just a junior with a bad kickoff too. That helped the Hills' field position. Handoff up the middle, nothing doing. A, lo a loss, maybe no gain on the play as the Valley fans are on their feet for the first time tonight. 
It'll be second and 10 now from Wayne, for Wayne Hills from the Valley 47. Andrew DeFilippis busting up the middle there, John, and right through the gaps. You know, it, it, it's going to come down to this, John. It, it, it's going to be how the offensive line blocks for Hills. They're, they're going to try to pressure Quinn as much as they can because they know he can throw the ball and he can run the ball. It's going to come down to how much Wayne Hills blocks for him. Hills goes in motion. D. Delectus moves from tight end to fullback. I formation once again. They're going to blow the play dead as flags fly. It's going to be a false start on the Patriots. That'll back them up five yards. Set up a six, second and 15 now. They'll be back in their own territory now. But Anthony, Wayne Valley's defensive line is huge. They got two guys close to three bills on that defensive line. So Hills' offensive line, like you said, is going to have to perform tonight. There's no question about it. Mike Quinn can't do it alone. He needs blocking. And Wayne Hills also needs a running game because they can't do it all through the arm of Mike Quinn. Yeah, John, you're right. I mean, they do have Mr. Castlebono on the the defensive line and they have Mr. Ryan Young who transferred to Wayne Valley last year and he's you know 6'7 pushing 300. Second and 15 from the 48 of Wayne Hills. Play action Quinn looks left he'll throw across the middle complete first down Wayne Hills in the Valley territory across the 25 finally tackled down at the 21 yard line. First and 10 Wayne Hills deep in the Valley territory. You know that's big John because last week we couldn't get any production from our tight end. That was Matt the Buck on the reception. You know, a great job getting open there, beating the linebacker. You see, the, the versatility of the block really helps in here because he has the speed of a wide receiver, but he has the height of a tight end. Absolutely great size and speed for Matt the Block. Hills goes with a quick snap count on first down. Handoff right, nothing there again. Another loss of one on the play. Dowling is getting eaten up in the backfield once again. It's going to be second and 11 or 12 now for Hills from the 20 two or three yard line of Valley. Valley's had a stifling defensive line right now. They're just keeping Brian in the backfield. Now Quinn's looked good so far on his two big plays he's broken already. I mean, great throw to DeBlock on the seam route. And DeBlock just beat the defender, so you gotta give both of them credit there. But Hills is moving the ball so far on the first drive. If they can score early, it'll really send a statement to Wayne Valley. Quinn under center now. Just one true receiver. Dowling goes in motion. The handoff goes up the middle as Dowling was sweeping across. Not much there, a gain of about two yards. John, it appeared that Dowling got the handoff and handed it back off to, it appears Steve Johnson. And Steve Johnson went to the right side, but tried to bounce it around the end and couldn't. Johnson got two yards on the carry, but it's gonna be third and nine for the Patriots from the Valley 21. This is borderline Divers range. I mean, he can hit one from here, but it, it'll be interesting to see if Ols Coach Olsen has the confidence in him to do that at this point. Well, if you remember last year, he hit like a 45 yarder off the bottom of the crossbar. I mean, uh, not, not the greatest of kicks, but you know, he has the leg to do it. It's just, just if the confidence is there for you know Coach Olsen. Right, it's a 38 yarder from here. So Divers definitely has the range, but it's gonna be a big third down play here for Hills as the, they're gonna blow the whistle. It's gonna be a timeout for the Patriots. Quinn was setting up in shotgun. So it looks like Wayne Hills is gonna throw. I mean, with no run game, if you're Wayne Valley here, can you just sit back and cover here and expect a pass? You know, John, you know, that, that's the risk you can take. I mean, all of a sudden you could have Brian Dowling standing next to, you know, Quinn, and, and all of a sudden a bubble screen comes around and you have blockers out wide at, at the wide receiver position. You have your ends, you know, pulling, and then you have Dowling with, the, you know, a, a nice gain or whoever out is out at the running back position. Right, and that's the thing that I think is going to be the difference in this game. Wayne Hills has so many weapons on offense. They can go to just about anyone and rely on them to make a big play. So they have so many options and so many players the defense has to cover for Valley. I wouldn't expect to run up the middle here just basically because they stuffed him on the first two plays. Maybe something working the sidelines, but we'll see if Quinn's in shotgun once again because that's how he was set up before they called that timeout. It'll be interesting what they do, see what they do here, John. You know, try to get a few yards, getting closer into field goal range or try to go for that first down. I don't think so. They'll probably go for the juggler here on third down, something towards the end zone. Quinn under center, though, this time. Fakes a handoff, drops back the pass, throws it deep to the end zone. Caught! Touchdown! Wayne Hill on the first drive. Hills goes down the field and scores on Wayne Valley. 6 nothing Patriots. That is a great play action pass by Mike Quinn, and DeBlock made a great fade pass. You know, John, you know what's great there? The offensive lineman at the, at the end position, you know, pulled and had the guy out in the open, so Quinn had time in the pocket. 
Mike Quinn has been money so far on his first two throws. He has hit his receivers right in the hands every time as Divers is now on for the extra point. Again, there is the production that we didn't have last week from the tight end position, John. Absolutely, DeBlock dropped a pass last year as the kick is off and good from Tim Divers. So on the first drive, Wayne Hills marches right down the field, a 74, I'm sorry, a 66 yard drive for the Patriots. Just seven plays, I believe. And just like that, Hills is on the board, 7-0, and Wayne Valley's sideline is silent. Do you guys think it's a sign for, you think this will ha keep happening throughout the game? I mean, I mean Valley's played good defense on the running game. Do you think Quinn can carry the load with the pass? I think it's all going to come down to this next drive for Valley because they just took a major shot to the chin. And right now, their offense is going to have to bounce back. If Hills can get a three and out here, this game could be over quick. If Valley's offense can sustain any type of drive, even if they don't score, that'll make this a football game. You know, John, that's why Mike Quinn is going to go to a D1 college. You know, do you see the passes there? He, the block was well covered. If you saw, he had a man right on him. No, you see, that, that again, a linebacker covering a, a fast tight end is, you know, something that you have to deal with. But a great job of the pass over the linebacker, only where the block could get the ball. You can't say enough about Mike Quinn so far in this game, and really for the whole season. Like you said, DeBlock was covered. He just, both of them just made a great play as the seniors hooked up for the first touchdown in the game. And it was a big one to really make a statement early in this game. I mean, we're not even a minute, and we're not even four minutes into this game. There's 8.44 to go in the first quarter, and Hills is already up 7 nothing. So now Divers tees it up from the 40-yard line as they'll kick it away for Valley's first possession. The kick is a good one. A solid kick by Tim Divers will be fielded at the four-yard line as they're going to run a reverse. No, they're going to fake the reverse as the run goes up the middle and is stuffed by Wayne Hills. Might have been a fumble on the play. Hill says they have it. The, the runner was stopped short of the 20-yard line as they unravel the pile. And it looks like it's going to stay with Wayne Valley. So Brian Dowling was signaling that Hills had recovered, but Valley was lucky enough to fall on the ball because that is something the kid just can't afford. John, you know, sometimes a fake reverse works, sometimes it doesn't. Wayne Hills did not bite at all. You saw all the people, all the white shirts surrounding that one blue shirt. You know, you, you gotta be scared if you're that guy. So Valley opens up their opening drive from the 19-yard line. Spread formation, Savistano in the shotgun, two receivers, man goes in motion. And Savasino's gonna drop back the pass, looks deep over the middle and overthrows his receiver, who gets absolutely laid out there. Bad throw by Savasino, he overshot his receiver, who was open by a good five, 10 yards. Hey, it was wide open there. Savasino just tried to, you know, really gun it in there and the block was there ready for the hit. You think that was too late of a hit by the block? Joe, not really. I mean, he, the ball had just sailed over the, the wide receiver's head when the block jumped. So, you know, it's fair. Yeah, you got to be careful if you're Wayne Hills, though. You don't want to give Valley any kind of momentum. A Savistano under center now. And it's going to be a reverse this time to the near side of the field. And it's going to be a big gain on the play right around the sticks as that was Michael Castles on the carry who got absolutely laid out by Nick Massey. He's been waiting for that all season. This is his first start. Again, John, that's what training in the offseason does. He comes and delivers a punishment. So you wonder if Massey's in the head now of Castles, as that was just a huge hit. And Castles was short of the first down by a yard. So it's going to be third and in inches for Valley. And in my mind, this is an absolutely gigantic play. Well, even, if, even if they don't get it, John, they could go for it on fourth down. There's going to be a stoppage here. Timeout for Wayne Valley. So with Hills up 7 nothing, I mean, Valley's really on their heels right now. They, they need this first down. I mean, otherwise Wayne Hills could come right back down. Their offense looks so sharp on the first drive. So to me, this is just a pivotal play for Valley. They need this first down. You know, even if Hills is a one-dimensional team, it, it's not bad. But if they can establish the run, there's, there's no stopping. Their offense is too, you know, too spread out. They have so many weapons, you can't stop them. And, you know, we got two early timeouts. I mean, you know, one for Wayne Hills there in their first drive and one, now one for Valley in their first drive. I mean, awkward time to use a timeout. These teams have been game planning for a long time. I mean, they'll only admit that they game planned the last week, but I mean, and I think the coaches have been looking forward to this game for a while. So they know each the other team's plays. And 
when you prepare this hard for a game and you have such a diagrammed playbook that, that they've put together for this game, you don't want to mess anything up that you've been working on for so long because you're going to rely on these plays that they've specialized for this game. And if they don't work, you're going to lose a lot of confidence if you're the players. But here we go. Third and inches for the Indians from their own 29-yard line. Two receivers, both of them split right. Savistano in the shotgun. He's going to run a QB draw to the right. Tries to get the first down and does. Gets across the 30 all the way to the 35-yard line. Savistano did a good job following his blocks there and pick up a key first down. Well, Savistano just struggled with a pass just now, but he does what he does best, run the, run the ball. Yeah, nice run by Savistano. Gain of six on the play. And Valley gets their first first down of the game, first and ten from the 35-yard line. You know, that's confusing to me, John, because, you know, Savistano is a phenomenal pitcher. I mean, he, he, he throws gas, you know, good off-speed stuff, and he can't throw the football correctly? Well, what's, well, I, not, not to say that he can't throw it correctly, but his accuracy isn't there? It's a little surprising, but, I mean, he's the quarterback for a reason, so he has to be able to throw the football to some type of degree. As a man goes in motion now, it's going to be a handoff up the middle, and it's going to be a gain of about three or four yards. So second and six now for Wayne Valley, as Valley's looking to run now after Savistano misfired on his first throw. Appears that Joe Lane is now in the game over Eddie Schiller. Eddie has been battling injuries all week, so Joe Lane is get, getting some playing time tonight. It's nice to see the younger kids get in the game, especially a kid like Joe Lane. It's unfortunate Schiller had a shoulder injury, I believe, this week. So it was a, he was a question mark all week. So here we go, second and six now for the Indians from the 34-yard line. I formation for the first time tonight. Savistano under center, two receivers split left. Savistano looks back to throw. Pressure coming, rolls right now. Throws over the middle, complete for a first down and more into Wayne Hill's territory. Savistano hits his receiver at the 42-yard line at Hills. Second first down, and Wayne Valley's offense now looks sharp as well. You know what, Johnny, he, he did do a nice job with the accuracy there. He shut me up. I mean, threads the needle. I mean, looked like a little floater. You know, Wayne Hills probably should have jumped in front of that, but, you know, you know that's going to happen now and then. And, you know, you, you see it once, you can't see it again. you got to stop it. Hills gets a few subs into the game now on defense. They're going to be shuffling guys in all, all night because they have such a great deep defense that they can afford to do that. So I think that's going to be a huge advantage down the stretch. First and 10 for Wayne Valley from the Hills, 42-yard line. Savistano in the shotgun once again. Two split backs for him. Looks to throw once again. Throw, looks to the left, throws a deep ball this time to number 10 who's open, but it's batted away by Matt DeBlock. DeBlock has come to play tonight as that pass was thrown deep, intended for Michael Tallarico, the junior wideout. Tallarico was open, but Savistano under threw the football. It's his second missed throw of the night, and DeBlock was there to bat it away. Well, that was a great job by DeBlock. He didn't even know where the ball was. He just put his hands up to distract the wide receiver and trying to deflect the ball, and he did a great job. You know, John, if he didn't turn his head around right there, that would have been pass interference, and they'd have the ball in the one-yard line. Great job of knowing his surroundings. Absolutely. Like Joe said, DeBlock didn't even see the ball, just stuck his hand between the receiver's hands. He knew that that's where the ball would be and made a great play. So second and ten now for the Indians. Savistano in the shotgun. Three receivers, two left, one to the right. Savistano, designed, runs to the left, tries to find a seam, breaks it for a short game, but he's met there and pushed back by a host of Patriots. Gain of three on the play for Savistano. Russell Bukarski, the first one in there, hit him right in the mouth. Oh, boy, what a hit. Nice play there by the Hills linebacking core as Hogan checks back into the game now. At linebacker, Bukarski comes out after his big hit. So third and seven now for Valley, a huge play once again. This is probably four down territory for the Indians being at the Hills 39. So they might run the ball here because they have probably two downs to work with. But Savistano threw the ball in the last two plays and before that last run there. So it'll be interesting to see what they do here. Pete Savistano's in the shotgun on third down. Hill shows blitz and they come hard. They blitz three guys and they get to the quarterback. The sack there for Wayne Hill, knocking Savistano back to his own 47 yard line. Big play there by the Patriots. I believe that was Nick Massey getting into the backfield for the sack. Hills brought the house and it worked there. Massey and Schiller in on a hit. Two juniors starting today. And you know, you have Massey coming off an injury. He's been waiting for this game right here. 
and the injury doesn't seem to be affecting him so far as he's been all over the field along with all of Hills' defensive players. So Hills gets a stop here. Valley picked up two nice first downs, but they're going to have to punt it away. Savistano is the punter. He stands at his own 40-yard line, ready to kick it away. Snap is good. Savistano gets it away just barely. High end over end kick. Hills is going to let it bounce inside the 20. Great kick by Savistano as Valley touches it up inside the five around the three. So that's a phenomenal punt by Savistano of 41 yards. So Hills is pinned deep now to begin their second drive. That's the field position we're talking about, John. We said it could come down to a field position game. Now we're starting at our own one or two yard line. This is going to be a long drive. Hopefully you can make something happen. But Brian Dowling had a chance there. It bounced right next to him, and he decided not to grab it because there was a defender right next to him. Guys, the Wayne Hills won 54 straight games in a row. Am I right? This, these drives make them win right here. From the two yard line, they got to go 98 yards. With an offense like this, they can definitely pull that off. Quinn is under center on first down. Two receivers to the left, Dowling in the backfield. Handoff is to Dowling up the middle. Met early, but he drags defenders and pulls the pile for a nice gain. Picks up about five yards there, so gives Quinn some breathing room there to work with. As it'll be second and about five yards from the eight yard line, second and four. Hills breaks the huddle on second down. The block will be the tight end. Quinn under center, looks back to throw, th throws a quick curl route to the receivers, got his man. He will pick up the first down on the far side of the sideline. Max DiCarvalho made the catch there. His first grab of the night, he had four catches and two touchdowns for over 100, and 100 yards last week against West Milford. So the first catch for him, Hills picked up the first down, now from the 15-yard line. I think Max DiCovallo did a little too much, try to get by his defender, but the main thing is he caught the ball and they got the first down. That's what keeps drives going. No question about it, DiCovallo is a big receiver at about six foot three. So he's a big target for Mike Quinn. As Quinn hands it up the middle, not much doing there. Dowling on the run. Perez, the linebacker for Valley, makes the tackle. So it's going to be second down now for the Patriots. Gain of two yards on the play, second and eight. You got to hit the line harder there, John. I mean, you know, that, that offensive line's got to get that push, got to get him that first initial yards, and he can make a play from there. They're going to whistle the play dead here. Hills calls another timeout. So that's the third timeout of the first quarter. Surprising there. But we're going to go to a short break. We'll be back with Hill, Wayne Hills, Wayne Valley after this. Back here at Wayne Valley for Wayne Hills, Wayne Valley High School football. 2-12 to go in the first quarter. Hills with a second and seven from their own 17 yard line. Mike Quinn's under center, I formation. And they're gonna throw a screen to the left, right side. Nice move there as the screen's gonna be close to the sticks. Mike Drees made a nice move on the defender. And it's, they're gonna be right around the sticks so there might be a measurement here. You know, that's, nope. that's just a little tease of what his brother used to do. Of course, Anthony's referring to Ronnie Treese, the great running back for Hills, who was a star for this team last year. As Mike stepped in right here as a junior now and is a starting receiver for the team. As you saw it, his talent there, great genes in that family, is 
Drees just easily shook the defender right to the floor. Quinn's gonna keep it himself and bounce it to the outside. Quinn's got a hole, the 45, 50, and is finally taken down in Valley territory at the 48 yard line. Great play by the Patriots to use a misdirection and use Quinn's speed as he bounced it to the outside and broke a huge run for the second time tonight. John, there appears to be a flag on the play. It looks like it's coming back. But if it weren't for the fact that the block let go of his block, he would have had more yards on that one. That's really unfortunate for Wayne Hills. I did not see the flag. But that's going to back him up as it's going to be third down once again now. It's going to be third and long this time. So a huge drive stopper. That's just something the coaches are not going to be satisfied with, obviously. Whoever it was, I'm sure, is not proud at the moment. Sickest man in America, John. That's for sure. As the holding must have been beyond the, the six because they're only going to back him up five yards. Unless it was something besides a hold, it must have been a block downfield, so not quite as unmakeable for the Patriots. Third and six for Hills. Two receivers split right. I formation for the for Hills. Quinn looks to throw, looks to the right. Pass incomplete. Dropped by Max Di Carvalho. Ball hit him right in the chest. He was in traffic, but he just flat out dropped it. John, they hit him right in the pads. Got to catch that ball. You know what, John? <laughs> Unless Divers gets an 80, 80 something yard punt, this is going to be his first punt outside of the 20 yard line. Divers do punt. You know Max isn't liking that play. Definitely disappointed with himself after that one. Fourth down now, Hills is going to have to punt. They haven't done it too much this year. I believe this is Divers' his second punt, fourth punt I'm, I'm informed. Fourth punt for Divers on the year. It's a good line drive kick. It'll take a Hills bounce at the 49. It's going to roll into Valley territory at about the 41 or 40 yard line. So that's where Valley will begin their second drive of the night with one minute to go in the first quarter. Valley stifling defense on Wayne Hills. Got them good field position for a score. Well, after Hills' touchdown, Valley has won the field position battle thus far. So, I mean, I think the, the touchdown for Hills might have been, like I, we said in the pregame, a little bit of butterflies from Valley because Hills scored so quick. So maybe Valley just didn't know what hit them. But I think both teams are settled in now, and it's going to be a great game. Savistano in shotgun, three receivers, two to his left, as one comes in motion now. And it's going to be a run up the middle. Not much there. Hills had a lot of pressure. It's going to be a gain of one yard. They get across the 40 to the 41. Nothing doing there, John. That was Greg Leneve on the carry. I could be mistaken, but I believe that's his first rush of the night. Castle's got the ones earlier. So now Savistano in the shotgun again. Once again, there's three receivers. Hill shows blitz, they come from the outside. Savistano under pressure, they're gonna throw a screen. Intended for Leneve, incomplete. He overthrew Leneve on that one. But with all the pressure on Savistano, he was certainly rattled all the way about 10 yards behind the line of scrimmage. Tough play to make for him. Risky business there, John, throwing that little lofter over the offensive lineman and the defensive lineman, trying to force the ball into double coverage. You see, that that's, that's something we talked about earlier. Trying to force the ball after Wayne Hills gets pressure on you is not a good idea because our secondary is, you know, although inexperienced, it is very, very sound. Well, Aniv got the call on the last two plays. And Valley really has to get him into their offense because he's their leading rusher, 216 yards in just two games. So he's their main guy on offense, other than Savistano, of course. And there might be another timeout here. And that's Valley's going to call their second timeout. So now both sides with just one timeout here in the first half. I mean, why are they calling so many timeouts? You know, John, sometimes your audibles just don't work and you you see you come out into your alignment on offensive defense and you see oh god they know exactly what we're doing and our audible is not going to work because they know our audible so you got to change that play 
It's a chess match, Anthony. That's really what I think it is so far. I mean, these coaches have game planned for a long time, and they don't want to be the ones to screw up. They want their, their players to be the ones to decide this game. So they're preparing their kids as much as possible, and they're not going to let this loss fall on their shoulders. So if they see something they don't like, they're going to call a timeout. But it'll be interesting to see in the second half if they just let their kids play and not call a timeout because they might need them down the stretch if they're behind. So they might not get the chance to change up the play if they don't like what they see because, like I said, timeouts are so valuable in the second half. You can afford to do this in the first half, but they might change it up in the second half. It'll be interesting to see what they do here on third and long. Either try to go deep or, you know, try to bust one out to get a few more yards and punt it, try to see if they could get Wayne Hosen deep into their own zone. Well, Valley breaks the huddle. Savistano with a shotgun on third and nine. Verrilli to the near side. Savistano looks deep as the pressure comes, and he's going to be sacked for a loss. Number 21, Steve Johnson, came in for the sack, along with Ryan Salerno, as they team up to sack Savistano in the backfield for a loss of one. Fourth and nine for the Indians, and they're going to have to punt for the second time tonight. Yeah, it's a big play right there. I mean, <laughs> he had a lot of time. He, he didn't see if anybody was open, and now, you know, they have to punt. Well, we know both of these teams have high-powered offenses, but so far it's been the defenses tonight that have really stepped up because Maybe the offense just aren't sharp because of maybe the cold temperatures, but probably because of the fans that are here and the magnitude of this game. But with the end of the first quarter, the score is Wayne Hills 7, Wayne Valley nothing. We'll be back with the second quarter of action after this. here at Wayne Valley High School for the Wayne Hills Wayne Valley matchup the one everyone's been waiting for here in front of a packed stadium at Wayne Valley High School we begin the second quarter of action with the score Wayne Hills 7 Wayne Valley nothing fourth down for the Indian Savistano is ready to punt Dowling and Dries are the deep men standing at their own 25 yard line ready to run it back Dowling let the first kick go and it cost them as Valley downed it at the Hills too so the Patriots won't be at, won't be backed up this that far this time. As Savistano stands at his own 28-yard line. John, you know the risky thing about having your quarterback at punter is that they could fake it at any time. That's a great point, Anthony. As it's a high kick, Dowling lets it go again, and it takes a Valley bounce for the second time tonight. As it doesn't get as deep this time, but again, a great pump by Savistano down at the 12-yard line. You know, John, Anthony, after watching the first quarter. I have to say, I don't really don't know who has control of the game right now. I mean, Hills and Valley are both doing a great job, but let's see who can make more plays. That'll be the turnout in this game. Yeah, that's a good point, Joe. You know, field position is important too. Hills will begin their third drive of the night from their own 12. Quinn leads the huddle. Ori Mitchell, the center, leads them up to the line. Di Carvalho to the left, along with Dries, eye formation. Quinn drops back to throw, looks left. This time it's complete to Di Carvalho for a gain of about seven. So trying to shake the cobwebs off Di Carvalho's head right there as Olsen goes right back to him and shows that he has confidence. So and this time Di Carvalho is able to haul it in, use his hands this time rather than his chest. So it sets up a nice situation for the Patriots second and short. <laughs> John, that was almost uh, a lucky. I don't, I don't want to say lucky. But he turned around and that ball was in his hand. So, you know, that's, that's, that's the skill of Mike Quinn to put it right where he needs to put it. Second and three for Wayne Hills. Quinn under center. Handoff goes up the middle to Dowling. First down, Wayne Hills. A gain of five on the play as the Patriots move the chains. That's Dowling's first down. It is first first down of the game. Yeah, I mean, he's really been stopped to this point. I mean, he has great stats this year, no question about it. Joe mentioned him in the pregame. 
eight touchdowns in two games to start the season. So he is, along with Clint, he's been the go-to guy for Wayne Hills. As they're going to come bring the six out to measure. So I was wrong that Dowling had picked it up. He might have, but it wasn't as obvious as I made it seem. Well, the initial spot had been across the line. I mean, he had signaled first down, and now they're going to measure it. And yeah, he got. Uh, yeah, he down. got it. Dowling with just enough to pick it up. Got it by the nose of the football. So as I said before, they move the chains here on the first set of downs. First and 10 for Wayne Hills from their own 27. First and 10 from the 27, Quinn under center. And it's gonna be play action, drops back to pass, pressure comes, Quinn eludes it and throws it deep down the field to Di Carvalho who can't haul it in. Di Carvalho got held up by the safety who fell, might have got tangled up, but Quinn just overthrew Di Carvalho who was wide open. John, I don't know if you saw there, but as he was trying to beat his defender, he stopped running. He tried to push him and stopped running. He would have had that ball. Oh my goodness. Well, the fact that Mike Quinn got added that possible sack is a blessing in disguise because it saves them from going back to their end zone and losing some yardage. And Max is a very athletic and tall receiver. So I mean the more grooming he gets as a football player, he's only going to start making those plays. And when he does, boy, he's going to be a good one. Now with Quinn under center, they're going to split five receivers here. First time we've seen this. Bubble screen to the left. It's going to be taken by, I believe, Dowling, who's going to fight forward for a nice play. Brian Dowling with a beautiful run there after the catch. Sets up a third and short now. Third and one. He did a great job of finding the hole, find, following his blocks, and carrying defenders. Dowling showing off everything he could do. He's had a great start to the season, like I said. Eight touchdowns, 30 carries, and 263 yards, averaging nearly seven yards per carry. So he can really do things in the open field and between the tackles. You know, he did a nice job there getting, getting separation from the defenders, making his first initial move and in, following his blockers. Hills breaks the huddle on third and one. Quinn under center, eye formation, dowling the tailback. Valley shows blitz, man in motion. The run is to dowling, who bounces it outside, and he's going to just get enough for the first down. Great run by Brian, showing his strength because he was stopped right at the line. He might, If he was pushed back, I think Hills was short. But he fell forward and got the first down. Great run, first and 10 Patriots. That's a good point, John. And, you know, that's what Brandon Jacobs in the stands does. He keeps chopping his feet and gets those first downs after that initial hit. Hill's moving the ball now, first and 10 from the 39. Eye formation again, Quinn looks to throw right, and it's gonna be incomplete. Intended for Drees, I believe. Second and 10 now for Wayne Hills, it's Quinn, his first missed pass of the game. I mean, just other than that deep ball that Di Carvalho slowed down on, all his throws have been perfect, so that's the first time he's missed a target tonight. Yeah, John, I mean, uh, just a little overthrown there for Mike Treese. Not, not the tallest kid, not the, not the shortest kid. You know, just a very strong, fast kid. But, you know, just a little over the top for him. We'll give Quinn a pass on that one. He is human. So, this is going to be Dowling splits to the left now as Quinn... He's going to take a design run up the middle. He's got room across the 40, across the 45, and Quinn lays a hit on the defender. First down, Wayne Hills. Quinn is using his legs. We haven't seen this so far all year. You know, Quinn, I think, is trying to show off Savistano. I mean, he's, do, he's doing, at that, running the ball better than Pete has. Yeah, Quinn is doing his best Pete Savistano impression right now. I mean, we haven't seen him run the ball all year. Looking at his running stats, he's got one carry for zero yards. Not anymore, and John. They're giving him the ball on design runs, not even, not even scrambles. And Quinn is showing everything he has. First and 10 for Wayne Hills. He's going to throw it that now as it's going to be a pump and go to Dowling down the sideline. He beats the defender. Dowling didn't see the ball. It was overthrown anyway. Great route by Dowling to beat the corner. But Quinn's pass was just overthrown. 
I think the defense kind of read that one. Good coverage there the entire way. That was number 14, Anthony Varelli on the coverage. But Dowling showing his speed. I mean, he just blew past Varelli. And Varelli's not a slower, unathletic kid by any means. Hey, so John, probably one of the most athletic kids on the team. He plays varsity basketball. He plays varsity baseball. I mean, all as a sophomore, he was starting in all three sports. Five receivers again as DeBlock goes in motion. And they fake the bubble screen to the left and go right this time to Dries, who trips and falls after a gain of just one. So the, uh, Hills went with a little misdirection there. On the last bubble screen, they put three guys to the right and threw it to the right. This time they put three guys to the right, fake to the right, and go left. So Olsen working his magic on Wayne Valley, and it, if Dries didn't fall down, it might have worked. You know, that, it, that is true, John, but, you know, Wayne Valley's linebackers really had that right. They were coming over to hit him as soon as he caught that ball. Luckily, he caught the ball and fell before, you know, anything bad could happen, but you know, now a long third down situation, maybe try to, you know, throw it to DeBlock, who's had a great game so far, and you know, try to get that first down. Third and nine for Wayne Hills. They were forced to punt on their last drive. It would be amazing if they had to do it twice in a row. And it's gonna be another timeout. Wayne Hills calls it, I believe that's their last time out of the half, and it is, so, I mean, it's, we've never seen them call timeouts, but it just shows how they're not taking Valley for granted at all because this is the first competitive team they've played all year. What do you think the problem is? I mean, are they not communicating out there? Are they not remembering the plays or the formations? What do you think? I think Hills is just perfectionist. I mean, really, they're used to blowing teams out 55 nothing, and only up 7 nothing. They have to be careful. They're not used to being in this situation, so they're not gonna, they don't want to make any type of mistake, and they want their kids fully educated as they go into the huddle. Long third down situation here, John. Let's see what Coach Olsen has drawn up for this one as he went out there to the huddle himself and told his players what he wants to do. Three receivers, Dowling split wide to the left, and it's gonna be James DeDelectis, the only man in the backfield. So possibly some type of motion here as Quinn takes a quick snap, drops back to throw to the left. Dowling, incomplete. Quinn put a lot of heat on that one as Dowling did not have a lot of room to work with along the sideline. Quinn threw it too far to Dowling's right and he couldn't haul it in. It would have been a tough catch. Uh, really a great one if he had made it, but it was a tough play to make. So fourth down, Valley forces another Wayne Hills punt as Divers gets ready to kick it away. So this is important right here, John. With seven minutes left, it, it could take the rest of that, the half, or the quarter, ex excuse me, to drive all the way down the field. So if Divers can really push them back into their own territory, it's, it's big. Valley backs off after it. they initially show like they were going to bring everyone. Deep kick for Divers, fielded at the 17-yard line. Varelli takes the cat, takes the punt, and brings it across the 25 to the 26-yard line. So that's where the Indians will begin their drive. Almost looks like somebody tried to jump that John and didn't didn't do it without going off sides and you know that was very close to being you know an extra five yards for Wayne Hills. Now the thing people have talked about is the weakness for Valley is their offensive line but they've held up to this point I mean they did give up a sack and some pressure but I mean they've, they've really hold, held their own as Savistano gives the first handoff to Castles who's met in the backfield by Russell Pekarski. Great play by Russell there to get the tackle for a loss. A loss of two, second and 12. Well, the Indians and the Patriots have shown up with their defenses. They're not letting either team get long rushing yards. Yeah, after, after Hills opened up with the great drive and they look really sharp, I mean, they just caught Valley off guard. And now the defenses have dug in and they're really shutting down both these offenses. Another timeout. Oh, the clock has gone out, John. Oh, it's back up. Shades of last week against West Milford. That happened to Hills twice. And then, of course, the thing everyone remembers, the blackout. The lights just went out with 25 seconds to go in the first half. And, I mean, the, both teams got new fields last year, on new scoreboards as well this year. They look identical, just obviously Hills is his maroon and Valley's is blue. But these, both scoreboards have malfunctioned so far this year. 
as now second and 12 for Valley. Screen pass complete. And he's going to be run out of bounds. Flag late hit on Nick Massey. I saw that one coming. The player, Valley player, had been out of bounds for a good step about. And Massey just leveled him into the hill sideline. Not a smart play by the junior Massey. As it's going to give Valley an automatic first down after it would have been just a gain of about four or five. Would have just gotten, it would have been third and eight, John. And Olsen is living on the sideline. You can see it. Not happy with the official, so he's backing up his player there. So it's going to be first and ten for Wayne Valley. Not the way Hills would have wanted him to pick it up. So it's from the 43-yard line, Valley has a first down with 6.37 to go in the first half. First down gives you a lot of momentum, John. I formation. Savicino fakes the toss and is absolutely crushed. Wow. Nick Tuminello blew that play up in the backfield, came out of nowhere, and Savistano didn't see it coming. Wow, he had the snap count down to a science right there, John. He watched it as soon as that ball left the center's hands. He was gone. He was already at Savistano. Wow, it is rare that you see a, a running play with a six-yard loss, because that's what that is. Nick Tuminello came out of nowhere. I don't know about Nick Tuminello, but Nation, is what they call him. That was a great play. Maybe a game changer, momentum changer. Absolutely. I mean, there was no momentum whatsoever before that one. As it's going to be a fake handoff pitch to the right. Castles has it, and he breaks a tackle, gains about one yard. So not much doing there. Great defense by Hills to get Castles there. John, that was so close to a fumble, it's not even funny. That's as close as it gets. The ball was out of his, out of his hand, into his arm, and he was able to regain you know, handling of the ball before he got hit again. Interesting misdirection from Valley. Trying to open up their playbook here, do anything they can against this great Hills defense. But Hills would have none of it, and they just shut it down for a, another great defensive play. Third and 15 now for the Indians. As Hills brings everyone up to blocks only about eight yards off the line of scrimmage, Savistano rolls left. Throws it deep down the left side. The defenders are there, and it's intercepted by Wayne Hill. Mike Drees with the interception. He went up the ladder to make the play. And Wayne Hills will take over from their own 31. John, as soon as Savistano was going to release that ball, he had a helmet in his stomach. Nick Tuminello drilled him. And that let a floater out of Savistano's hand, and Drees was able to read that the entire time. You know, that stayed in the air way too long. Yeah, Savistano threw up a wobbler, a floater, and that was asking to be picked off. I mean, he did get it 35 yards down the field, but Hills was there waiting for it. And if it wasn't D Dries, it would have been to block with the pick. They were both there. I don't know why Savistano just didn't throw it out of bounds, you know? When you throw in a triple coverage, good things are not going to happen. Well, on third and long, I mean, that's basically a punt for Valley, so it's not the worst thing. As you see, Quinn rolls left. He's going to run it again. Great speed there from Valley's defense, and Quinn is hit in the backfield for a loss. The first time a designed run for Quinn has been unsuccessful. Loss of about one on the play, second and 11. That was a great play by Colin Bush there coming over from linebacker to make that play. He was in the right up, so it's definitely. A design run there for Quinn. I mean, first down, try to get something up the gut, get a few yards. I mean, don't try to bust it to the outside on first down. Well, if it's worked the first three times, why not do it again? And that's what they did, but it didn't work out this time. Quinn back to pass. Pressure from Valley. It's a design screen to Dowling, who has a block and breaks it at the 40. Breaks it down at the 50. 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, uh, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, but it's going to be called back. Nope, they're going to say he stepped out of bounds. At the 46, Dowling broke the run. That had touchdown written all over it. Dowling was taking it for the end zone, but they say he just clipped the sideline. They do get a first down, but unfortunate for Wayne Hills as they go from a touchdown to 56, 54 yards away. 
<laughs> Johnny ruined your call there. <laughs> you had it. <laughs> Yeah, that was, a, that was a nice play. I mean, you had Dowling standing next to Quinn the entire time. A light hit on the linemen. Let them get through, and then boom, throw it right over those linemen head into Dowling and let him open it up. You get Brian Dowling one-on-one -on -one in open field. He's going to make you pay. Quinn throws right complete this time. Another curl as I believe that was Drees has wrestled down. That was Maxi Carvalho, excuse me, on the far sideline. Gain of five on the play. It's the third time they've run a, a curl to Di Carvalho. Two for three now is Di Carvalho on making the play. And there's going to be a flag on Wayne Hills, I believe. And the fans do not like that. I'm not sure what the call was. But it's going to back them up to where they were, so second and ten for the Patriots. So that, that play gets wiped out. Well, let's go process of elimination here, John. Five-yard penalty. That means it was either offsides of some sort or, you know, so something like that. Eye formation, pitch left to Dowling. Gets his, tries to follow his blocks. Gets about one yard on the play. There was just nothing there for Brian. I mean, the blocks were there, but so were the defenders. Nothing Brian can do there. With 2.47 to go in the half, Hills faces a third and eight from their own 48-yard line. Quinn runs the play into the huddle. But miscues on offense, something we haven't seen all year from Hills. A penalty, and then it wasn't really a miscue, but Dowling stepping out of bounds. So the first time really all year, Hills hasn't caught breaks. As Quinn drops back to pass on third down, looks to the left, throws it to Dowling, and it's going to be incomplete. Great hit there by number four, Mike Castles as Dowling again with not a lot of room to work with. And Quinn hit him, but Castles was just there for the great timing. That could be a game-changing play right there. It puts, it puts uh, Hills to punt the ball, and Valley might get good field position for seven with 2.21 left on the clock. You gotta give a lot of credit to Valley's corners in this game. They've played great. Anthony Varelli and Mike Castles have really stuck it to the Wayne Hills receivers. The only reason Hills' passing game has been well, has been doing well is because Quinn is hitting his throws. I mean, if it wasn't for Mike Quinn, Wayne Hills would have no offense right now. I mean, why are they straying away from what they were doing in the beginning and scoring points? You had the block not, not open on that play, but you've had him open on previous plays. Great pump by Divers, fair catch by Varelli at his own 16-yard line. Punt of about 40 yards for Divers. So that's where Wayne Valley will start their drive. 2.13 to go in the half. So it'll be interesting to see. Hills has no timeout, so Valley can just run the clock out if they want. So we'll see if they have enough confidence in their offense to really take shots down the field here. John, I don't think they're really going to try to run down the clock. I mean, two minutes, you got, you got your two-minute drill. They're, they're going to try to drive it down the field and score as fast as they can. I mean, to be honest, if you're Valley, I think you're happy with a 7-0 deficit at halftime. I mean, I don't know if they expected this to be in the game at this point, but you see here, man in motion. It's a double reverse to Castles, who finds a hole, is into the secondary, and is gonna be tripped up and wrestled down at the 35, 25 yard line. Nice misdirection there. First successful run of the game for Wayne Valley. Johnny was one step away from a touchdown. If he didn't stumble, he had the outside all to himself. Hill sent the linebackers there, and they closed quickly. But once Castles got through the linebacking core, there was just one or two guys there in the secondary to make the play. So great open field tackling by the Hills defenders. Second and three now for Valley after the seven yard run. And Castles breaks it again up the middle. First down and more across the 40 yard line to the 42. That's a 15 yard run for Mike Castles and a Wayne Valley first down. Starting to break the runs, John. Not good. Stop the defense. Let's go. Start it up. And once again, the clock's gone out. And it's back again. Let's see, so, I mean, John. Last week, the clock went out two times before the power went out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. That means next time. You never know. Third time's a charm. We could see back to black, back, ugh, excuse me, blackouts on back-to-back -back weeks. Unheard of. Really? 
Valley's offense is starting to get on a, a little bit of a rhythm. So let's see how Wayne Hills tries to stop that with a minute and 24 seconds left, maybe force a turnover and try to get the ball back and drive down the field yourself. Yeah, that's the first time tonight that Valley's had two successful plays in a row. Hills has been in the backfield to disrupt just about everything so far. And, I mean, Valley, like you said, they're getting in a rhythm now. If they can keep it up, you never know. They might put some points on the board before halftime. So after the scoreboard delay, it's going to be first and 10 for the Indians from their own 42. Hills in their 4-4 defense. Savistano back to pass. Looks to the right. Throws it for Anthony Varelli, who drops the football. Might have been intercepted. And it was. Wayne Hills gets the first turnover of the game, I believe. They're going to discuss it and give them the football. Interception by, Bra by Steve Johnson off the deflection from Anthony Varelli. So Savistano missed the target again. Varelli was open. It went through his hands. It was not a good throw. And Johnson was there for the heads-up interception. John, I don't know if you were watching the Giants game last week, but something similar to this happened. It went off of Jason Witten's hand. A pass from Tony Rono went off of Jason Witten's hands and bounced into the Giants defender's you know, chest, and he, he intercepted it as what happened right here. Just a heads-up play from Johnson as Hills opens up eye formation. Quinn drops back to the pass. There's that screen again to Dowling. He's got blockers in front of him at the 50. 45-40, cuts it upfield at the 35, and brings it at the 30. 20, 15, 10, 5. Tackled at the one-yard line. Brian Dowling showing everything he has to offer for Wayne Hill. A huge run for him and was brought down by the ankles inside the five. That's a great run by Brian. Brian Dowling, he almost got there, guys. Would have had a 14-0 lead. The second time Dowling has darted across the field tonight, he has so much speed. He follows his blocks and just soars past every Valley defender. There was one guy there to make the play, and he did. Give kudos to Valley's defense, as Hills now has a first and goal from the five. So they are in great position with 105 to go in the half. Three men in the backfield as Hills goes with a power formation. Quinn runs to the left and is met for no gain. Another designed run for Quinn as clock ticks now with 55 seconds to go. So Hills is going to have to hurry up. They have no timeouts to work with. So the Patriots are now in no huddles formations. Once again, wishbone, three men in the backfield, no receivers. And Quinn spikes the ball. So with only one play called, Quinn had to clock it. So it's now going to be third down and goal. So, I mean, this is obviously, if they don't get it here, they're going to have to kick a field goal, but Hales wants a touchdown. John, when you're up, this is two-down territory. You, you can go for it here. Well, but Divers is going to be ready, though. You know he's going to be ready to, to, to kick it in. Absolutely. And I know Coach Olsen has been known to go for it on just about every fourth down. But if Hills doesn't get at least a couple yards here, I would not be surprised to see him kick a field goal. This is a close game. Valley's playing their hearts out. It could come down to a few points down the stretch. Why leave points on the scoreboard if you're Coach Olsen? Take what you can get at this point. I mean, I don't know about you, but my, but my halftime prediction was 10-0. So if that happens, I'll be spot on. I mean, you, you predicted a blowout, but Valley's kept it close, just like I thought. John, you're, you're, too, you're too smart for us sometimes. You, you're, they probably will get a field goal. It'll probably be 10-0. Thank you, so Joe. So you've done your job. You've done your research this week. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate it. Now, the last time out of the half goes on here. So both teams using all their timeouts in the first half, extending this game to as pretty much as long as it can go. So I don't think anyone's complaining at the, with the magnitude of this game. So this is obviously a huge play. It's basically the difference in four points. Right John, here. This is going to be different from uh, the second half of last week, where it went by in, in a matter of. It seemed like 10 minutes, but, you know, more than that with the, the mercy rule. But, you know, 7 nothing is a close game. I mean, Valley's sticking in it better than I thought they would. I thought this was going to be a blowout. I thought we were going to come out hitting them harder than we were. You know, it, we've been battling so far. But if we could put on put on some points right here, it's big. Yeah, Hills fans are actually going to get their money money's worth tonight. I mean, they're used to seeing short and second half. So, I mean, they're going to get to see a full football game. It's not something you see every week if you're Wayne Hills fans. So here we go, third and goal from the five-yard line. Four receivers set, so Hills is spreading the field. Dowling wide in the slot to the left. Dries and DiCarvalo to the right. Quinn drops back to throw. Looks to the right. Fade route. Incomplete. Overthrown. Mike Dries was the intended receiver. 
He could not haul it in, so it's going to be fourth down, and here comes Tim Divers in the field goal unit. Well, I saw Mike Juice cut the corner. It was a great fade route, and Quinn almost got it there, maybe just a little bit too long. You know what he, you know what he did, John? He started back playing. As soon as you start back pedaling, you know, you, you trip, you fall, and he, you know, it's hard to catch that ball when you're going backwards like that. Let's see if Divers can punch this in. This is Divers' field goal try. No good. Divers is upset with himself, no doubt about that. As Valley finally gets something to cheer about. A missed 22-yard field goal from Tim Divers. You don't see that every day. So right, just like that, Valley takes the momentum back. Don, he, he, he hit the side of the ball. I don't, I don't know if you could tell from the camera, but he hit the side of the ball and, and it just hooked. It, and it, it, it literally had no spin. It was like a knuckleball. He, he just hit that extremely incorrectly. And, you know, that could be potential game deciding factor. Don't be fooled, folks. Tim Divers is a great kicker. He has range from upwards of 55 yards. So, I mean, the, ta the lack of talent wasn't the factor on that one. He just missed it. But now with 36 seconds to go, as Divers gets an earful from Coach Olsen, with 35 seconds to go, Valley's probably just going to run at the clock, but Savistano is in shotgun formation. They run it to the left to Castles. Not much doing there. Hills' defense was all over it. So that'll most likely be the last play of the first half with 23 seconds and counting. And that will probably do it for the first half of action, down to seven seconds now. So guys, at the end of one half of play, in the big one, the crosstown rivalry, Wayne Hills, Wayne Valley, the score is Wayne Hills seven, Wayne Valley nothing. This is one of the closest game Hills has played in a long time. What stands out to you in this first half? Well, the Valley's played such great defense. I mean, Wayne Hills used to scoring 20 points and a half, maybe more, but they've only held them seven. It gives them a real chance in the second half to win this game. Joe, I don't think it's necessarily the defense is too good. It's us not capitalizing on our opportunities. We have two interceptions in the second quarter, and neither of them result in points. And you have an opportunity for a field goal, and you don't capitalize, and that's what we need to focus on. Capitalize on our opportunities that are handed to us. To me, the story of the first half is Wayne Valley's defense. They've played phenomenal. Hills has put up 20, 30 points in every half they've played this year. And Valley, from the defensive line to the secondary to the linebackers, has played great no matter how you look at it. Hills has had just about no running game all night. They've had to rely on Mike Quinn, who's made a lot of great throws. But Valley's secondary has been just as good. They've been there on just about every pass Quinn's made. So Hills is going to have to change things up. They've come out with a lot of different creative plays. And you can't, you can't fault the coaches because they've done a great job too. Hills is just going to have to outman Valley on the line in the second half. Or this is going to come down to the wire. It's true, John. We'll see what happens after halftime. So that'll do it for the first half. We might have some special guests for you in the second half. Dave Suntup, Brandon Jacobs, who knows? There's a lot of high-profile people here tonight. It's basically the whole town of Wayne is here. So stay tuned. We'll be back with an interview or the second half of action after this. This is Nick Warzel's limelight, folks. This is when he brings his A game. The lights are turned on the field. Late in the day, he's ready to go. On first down, Horzell back to pass. Excellent protection all the time in the world. Looking downfield, looking for Van Peden, triple covered. Sticks it in there, flags on the play. Van Peden ahead to the 20, looking for the sideline. He's across the 10 near the goal line, dives. Touchdown, Ray Van Peden. Well, welcome back to Wayne Valley High School. I'm joined by our special guest graduate, David Suntup. Dave, you're a legend of the Wayne Hills TV program. <laughs> called so many games in your days. You've seen so many Wayne Hills teams. Everything, you've been through everything with this program. I mean, you, you've seen so many close games, tons of blowouts, obviously. But um, you, you, you were here for the first half. You've seen this game against Valley. It's only 7 nothing Hills. What stood out for you so far in, in this game? Well, Wayne Hills, they got the ball first. Mike Quinn made a few, a few big throws to Matt to block, and you got to give credit to the block. He made some tough catches, especially the one in the end zone on third and long. But the thing that Wayne Hills needs to do is they need to start running the ball effectively, 
pick up more yards on the ground because Wayne Valley's done a great job containing the run. Brian Dowling, in the first two games, he was running all over the place, and he was just so hard to contain. And tonight, the Wayne Valley defense has shut him down for the most part, except for a few screen plays out on the left flat. So Wayne Ellis needs to get back to the basics, start running the ball, and then using the play action and going deep down the field to the block and Di Cavalho. There's no question Wayne Valley's defense has been up to the task ever since that opening drive when Wayne Hills marched down the field. But if you're Coach Olsen, I mean, you get in his head. You probably know him better than we do. What do you think he's telling his players here at halftime, and how, how do you expect Wayne Hills to come out in the second half? Well, the last time these two teams met under the bright lights of Giants Stadium back on November 30th, 2007, Wayne Hills only had a six-point edge. And Coach Olsen, when I interviewed him after that game, he told me, he's like, Dave, they have to be physical. He's probably telling them right now, be physical, especially the offensive line. They need to be physical. They need to plow some lanes for Br for Brian Dowling to run through. So if they could be physical, stay aggressive on defense, because they start to get to Savage Stan a little bit more in the second quarter and force them to throw two interceptions. So if they could stay aggressive on defense and be physical on the offensive line, they'll be in good shape in the second half. Yeah, Wayne Hills has been here before. I mean, most of the time they do blow out their opponents in the first half. But it's not like they haven't been in close games before. Last year they had two close ones against Pascac Valley, the first of which, which Anthony and I were at. It was 0-0 at halftime. Most of the state championship games are close at halftime. So the coaches have been here before in this situation. Now, you're at Syracuse University. You're now a sophomore. What have you been doing up there? Obviously, you're doing bigger and better things, as you would say. How's the TV career coming along up there? Well, I wouldn't say I'm doing bigger and better things yet, considering that I haven't called a game there. But I'm involved all over the place. I'm involved at the student radio station, Citrus TV. I'm anchoring the sports on the newscast. And then I'm involved with the sports staff. And then I'm involved with two radio stations, Z89 and WAR. For Z89, I'm clear to be on air, so I'm doing morning updates. And then I'm also giving reports from high school football games up in the central New York area. And high school football is actually very intense there, just like it is in this area. And then I'm trying to get cleared to do play-by-play -play for women's basketball, women's lacrosse. And then WAR, the radio station that does all the football, men's basketball, men's lacrosse games, it takes at least a year and a half to two years to get cleared to staff there. So I'm working on that. And then I'm also calling the Syracuse Stars games this upcoming season. They are in the Eastern Junior Hockey League. The Jersey Hitmen who played the Ice Fall are in the same league as them, so I'll be calling some of those games. And I'm really looking forward to it. Wow, well, we wish you, wish you the best of luck as you try to make a name for yourself because this industry is not easy. I mean, you've been up there now to higher levels. For guys like us, Anthony and I, who look to go into future broadcasting, I mean, what kind of advice could you give to kids trying to make a, make a living in the broadcasting industry? Well, the first step is to get good grades in high school because if you don't get good grades in high school, you can't get into a good college. The second step is if your high school has a television or a radio station, definitely get involved, work hard. Put in the effort. I know it's tough to start out at the bottom of the totem pole, but if you put in the effort, you'll get the results later on. And especially with this varsity network coming out, you guys are so fortunate to have MSG who creates this varsity network that's going to put all your games on that network and people all over the Trice area could view them. That's just a great way for you guys to show off your talents and hopefully network. But the best advice going to college is to find a school that has a great television and radio station, especially radio, because college is mostly radio, since all the national networks like ESPN do a lot of the college games, so they're not on TV. So go to a college that's a great radio station and where you know you can get a lot of experience and make some great contacts. Well, thanks for all that, Dave. Now, you've been to a ton of Wayne Hills football games in your career. Obviously, you called just about all of them. This, is a great, this looks like it could be a great one. To you, In your mind, what are some of the greatest games that have stand out to you over your four years at Hills? Well, I have to say, my freshman year, Wayne Hills at Demarest, December 4th, 2004, Northland Group 3 State Championship game, where Ben Peenan made that catch in triple coverage, and then Toby Detallo had that big interception. I mean, that was the first of this big run of five Northland Group 3 State Championships in a row. And then other than that, Wayne Hills at Ramapo on October 28, 2005, when Wayne Hills was down 26 to seven at halftime and came back to win 27-26. And then I would also say all the state championship games. I mean, the 2005 game when Wayne Hills blew out Parsippany Hills, 2006 at Rutgers Stadium when they beat Par Hills again, even though the game was a little closer. And then in 2007, of course, beating Wayne Valley under the bright lights at Giants Stadium. Now I know it's early, but you've seen so many great Hills teams. You've seen so many championships. But where, 
it's only been two and a half games, but where do you think this team ranks in comparison to those as far as talent level and how just dominating they are? Well, Mike Quinn is one of the best quarterbacks in the state of New Jersey and the Tri-State area. I mean, he could air it out from anywhere on the field. I saw him last year against Ulta Pan, a game where he threw for around five touchdowns or so, and he was just eluding defenders, moving around the pocket. He wasn't getting phased when guys were coming at him from his blind side, and he's able to throw the ball 40 to 50 yards on the field. So, I mean, with him under center, they have a great chance to win it all again this year and definitely beat St. Joe's next week. The running game, Brian Dowling, I know he hasn't really shown it tonight. He's gotten off to a slow start. But, he, I mean, he's not a big guy, but he's a fast guy. He's quick. He moves his feet well. He's got great footwork. So, I mean, in the offensive side of the ball, they're set. And the defense has been outstanding tonight. I mean, it's going to be – I know Wayne Hills has only scored one touchdown. And they're clinging to a seven-point lead. But it's going to be real tough for this Wayne Valley offense to put up a few touchdowns against this Hills day. So, Dave, you've called tons of games for all different teams. Would you like to call another one for this one? It's up to you guys. It's up to you and Anthony. But I, I, I'd love to if you guys give me the chance, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Well, Dave, of course we'll give you the chance. We'll be back. I'm with honored, sir. Thank you. <laughs> we'll be back with the second half of action and Dave Suntup calling the plays after this. Monahan turns around, takes a quick peek at the clock, hands it up the middle to Lynn, who gets outside. Chaz Lynn, it's a foot race. He's at the 40, to the 30. Lynn still on the feet, and he's in. Touchdown, Lynn Hills. Look at the clock, Lou, it reads triple zeros as Chaz Lynn plays his own version of beat the clock. He had to go one place, and that was into the end zone. Because if he was tackled, the half was over. Chaz Lynn beats the clock. Welcome back to Wayne Valley High School as we get ready to start the second half of action with your Wayne Hills Patriots leading the Wayne Valley Indians by a score of 7-0. I'm joined by Anthony Scadillo and David Suntup, who's coming along now to call the first couple drives here the second half. My first question for you, Anthony. What do you expect to see in the second half? I mean, we were here before last season, a regular season game on a night very similar to this against Pascag Valley. It was 0-0 at halftime, and right out of the gates, Brian Ogden broke a kickoff return and set the tone for the second half. The but difference, this, difference here, John, is that we'll be kicking off this half. But, but, you know, the big thing is here, after Divers misses that extra, uh, excuse me, 22-yard field goal, we'll see how he comes off and, and you know, tries to get a touchback here. I have a feeling he's going to hit it out of the end zone. He's going to get it really far. Now, Dave, you know Wayne Hills football better than anyone. Without being a homer, all biases aside, what do you expect to see coming out of the gates here in the second half? I expected to see a very motivated and physical Patriots squad. Coach Olsen, he's one of the best at making halftime adjustments. He's going to implement all those new plays and ideas in the second half, they talked about with his team in the locker room. They're going to be more aggressive. Hopefully, they'll take some more shots on the field, take advantage of Quinn's orange straight, and really test that Wayne Valley secondary. Well, we're about ready to get it started here as Tim Divers tees it up to begin the second half. Both crowds have not left at all because it's only 7 nothing. as they file back in from the snack bars. We are about ready to start the second half of action. I expect it to stay close for a while, and who knows? Maybe Valley can pull the upset, but obviously we're pulling for the Patriots as Divers tees it up. Wayne Hills is ready to hit someone as Divers charges toward the ball and kicks it away. A great kick. That'll chase Morelli into the end zone. Six yards deep. Divers mustered up all the anger for missing that field goal and crushed that one. Yeah, John. Oh, baby. He hit the... Wow. I don't think I've ever seen a kickoff that go that far for Tim Divers. That reminds me of the days when Scott Iowa Schultz used to be the place kicker for Wayne Hills and he would kick him into the end zone on a regular basis. That was just a monstrous kick there by Tim Divers pinning Wayne Valley at their own 20 yard line. Let's see if the Wayne Hills defense can put some pressure on Savistano and force a turnover. Yeah, Schultz is now a redshirt sophomore defensive lineman for UConn, so he's playing Division I college football. Savistano starts the second half under center. Handoff up the middle, eaten up his castles by Nick Massey, Steve Johnson, and another linebacker. Wayne Hills' defense is up to the test on the first play of the half. 
You know, John, Nick Massey has had a huge game today, uh, coming off an injury, a, a knee injury. You know, he's had a, a, around five tackles, you know, uh, most of them for losses. So, you know, great job coming off an injury for him. Yeah, he has not skipped a beat. I mean, he is flying all over the field. If you didn't know he had a leg injury, I mean, he's showing no signs of it. Here we go now, second and ten from the Valley 36-yard line. Savistano under center, three receiver set. Castles in the back, I'm sorry, Leneve in the backfield. Reverse to Castles, Castles cuts it back. Nothing doing there. He's met for no gain on the play as Wayne Hills bottled him up. Great job there by the Patriots defense. They read that reverse all the way and they had great coverage there in the middle of the field. Wayne Valley tried to spread out the Wayne Hills defense by going for the three wide receiver set, but the Patriots D didn't fall for it there. Hill's getting some defensive subs into the game now as cornerback Troy Zafino will check in on third and long to try to match up any receivers that the Valley's going to throw at them. James Hogan also checks in at linebacker. He's been out most of the first half with an injury, but he has gotten some playing time tonight as Savasano drops pass the, drop, backs the pass. He throws it complete to Greg Leneve, who's got the first down and more at the 35-yard line. So on third and long, a great design play from Valley. No one was home for Hills. That was the Fino side of the field, but no one was there in the flat. And Leneve just took it for the first down, and Valley's offense is in business to start out the second yeah, half. Yeah, John, you know, Valley, I mean, excuse me, Hills brought the house on that one, blitzing, you know, most of their linebackers. And, you know, in fact, Nick Massey got to the quarterback and hit him as soon as he let go of the ball, enabling, you know, Leneve to get to the outside and get the first down. Hogan and Zafino will stay in the game. As Savistano did a great job of reading the blitz and just dumping it off to Leneve. Four receivers for Valley, Savistano under center. Castles goes in motion, and it's going to be a handoff up the middle to Leneve, who stopped after a short gain of about one or two yards. So it'll be second and eight now for the Indians. Nice job by the right side of that Patriots defensive line, stopping the run there, reading it off the left tackle. If you're the Wayne Hills D, you want to keep Wayne Valley in these long situations. I mean, on the previous set of downs, Wayne Valley had a third and long and they converted. But it hasn't been too often where the Indians have been moving the chains on third and long. So if Wayne Hills could keep Wayne Valley in those types of second and long, third and long situations, they'll be in good shape. Absolutely. Wayne Hills isn't going to give up long plays all night. As you see movement now before the snap, Tuminello jumped, but it was probably triggered by a Valley offensive lineman. We'll see the call. Per, most likely a false start, but we will see. And it is going to be a false start on Valley. So that'll back him up five more yards. Wiping out that last run by Leneve, it's going to be second and 13 now. Yeah, John, it looks like Tuminello is trying to, you know, get a, get a good job on the uh, snap, trying to, you know, count it. And, you know, in doing so, he got one of the... Uh, offensive lineman for Valley to jump and he also he also jumps. So on second and long, Valley's going with three receivers and a, one man in the backfield, Savistano from the shotgun. Rolls right, looks down the field, no one open. He's gonna tuck it and run, picks up a, a moderate gain as he is absolutely crushed by Nick Massey. A helmet to helmet hit from Massey and Savistano went flying into the hill sideline. Another hit from Massey, but Savistano picks up seven on the play. The junior, Nick Massey, today has just done a phenomenal job. He's been punishing people left and right at the linebacker position. It's been hard for people to get by him. Yeah, and if people didn't know he missed the first two games, they know now because Nick Massey is having a phenomenal game at linebacker. As I talked about, Coming out of the halftime break, Wayne Hills was going to be more physical, and you just saw it right there from Nick Massey. That Wayne Valley ball carrier just ran into a brick wall on that play. Third and five for Valley. Big, big play for both sides. As a man goes in motion for Valley, it's Varelli. They're going to fake the reverse to Varelli. Give it to Leneve, who breaks the tackle and is going to be stopped short of the first down. A great shoestring tackle there by Wayne Hills, because if he got past that one, it was a first down and more for Valley. So it's going to be fourth down and four now for the Indians, and they're going to have to punt. Huge play for Mike Dries on third down, making that open field tackle. If the ball carrier escaped there, that could have been a, definitely a Wayne Valley first down, and, de and even more after that. That is a huge play by the Hills defense now, as they will get the ball without giving up much to Valley, only one first down. Savistano back to punt. Dowling and Dries, the deep man, once again. The snap is good. Savistano's kick is a, 
end over end kick fielded by Dowling. He's going to cross the field at the 40. I'm sorry, that was Drees. And he's going to be tackled there at about the 39 yard line. So that's where Hills will start their drive. And now I'm going to turn the play by play duties over to the one and only David Suntop. Thanks, John. So it'll be first and 10 for the Patriots from their own 39-yard line, 8.17 to go in the third quarter. If you're just joining us, Wayne Hills with a 7 to nothing edge over their crosstown rival, Wayne Valley Indians. And Mike Quinn takes the field for the first time in this second half. Wayne Hills scored on their first possession of the game. Guys, what do they need to do to get back into the end zone? Well, I think they're going to have to mix it up a little bit. Maybe try their run game a little bit. Troy Zafino's on the field now, but it'll be interesting. Two men on the backfield play action. Quinn rolls out to his left. Is getting pressured as he is taken down in the backfield for a sack. Mike Quinn had nowhere to go with the football and runs into a bunch of blue jerseys. Andrew DeFilippis made a great play tracking down Quinn. And that was a, just a great play by Valley, but Quinn has to do all he can there to try to get rid of the football and throw it out of bounds because that's a huge loss now. Second in, I don't even know, 22, something like that. But I mean, Quinn's gotta do anything he can to get rid of the ball there, he just couldn't do it. It seems like Quinn is favoring the left side of the field and that's rare considering that he's a righty. So Wayne Hills, second in 21 from their own 29 yard line, two right receivers split right. Quinn is gonna keep it up the middle and he gets a gain of maybe two on the play. The Wayne Valley defensive line converges on Quinn so a minimal gain for the Patriots quarterback, and Wayne Hills finds itself in a third and long situation. Not the start Hills wanted if you're their offensive coordinator because they wanted to come out and make a statement just like they did in the first half, but Valley has answered the call. Their defense has been great so far. Now a third and long play. If I'm the coach, I'm calling another one of those screens to Dowling and see if he can break another one. So it'll be third and 18 for the Patriots from their own 32 yard line, 655 remaining in the third quarter. Qu Quinn, play action, drops back the pass, looking deep down the field to the right side as the pass is incomplete over the head of Max D. Cavallo. So the Patriots punt team will come onto the field as Tim Divers will kick it away to the Indians. So Wayne Hills goes three and out on its first possession of the second half. John, one thing that Max has been doing, uh, excuse me, uh, Dave, the one thing that Max has been doing all game is that stopping to look for the ball mid, midway in his route. You can't stop. You have to run to where the ball is going to be. You can't look back and watch it. Especially with such an, an experienced and great quarterback like Mike Quinn, he's going to expect you to keep running, and he's going to hit you in stride. There's no need to slow down. Wayne Valley is going to burn their first time out of the second half. Both these teams used their timeouts pretty quickly in the first half, so it's gonna be interesting to see if these teams are a little more prudent in using their timeouts. Tim Divers has already punted a few times tonight, and this is probably one of the few games all year where he'll be kicking the ball away to the other team multiple times. And guys, Divers has really impressed me with his punting. Besides the air time and the distance, the location has been phenomenal. Yeah, Divers, this is just his first year being the punter. I mean, Danny DeSico was the punter a couple years ago. Last year was Brian Ogden. But I mean, Divers has skills with his foot, whether he's kicking field goals, with kickoffs like we saw before, or punts now. I mean, he's just crushing the ball, and that is huge for a team in high school because if you can pin a, an opponent deep in their own territory, it's a huge advantage starting a drive. So, play will get underway again after Wayne Valley burned their first time out of the second half. 6.45 remaining in the third quarter, 7-0 Wayne Hills. Mike Castles and Anthony Virilli back deep to receive the Divers kick. Snap is high, but a good job by Divers to bring it down, but the punt is short. Bounces at about the 49-yard line. It takes a Wayne Hills bounce. The Patriots got a huge break there, and it's going to be down around the Wayne Valley 32-yard line. That's so a, only around a 36-yard punt for Divers, which isn't bad considering that the punt bounced around the 49-yard line or so. So a fortuitous bounce for the Patriots. That's the second miscue tonight for Tim Divers, missing on the field goal, and then also 
flubbing the punt there. I mean, he gets a lucky bounce. It did bounce an extra 20 yards, but a gr horrible job tonight. I mean, he really needs to step it up if they want to, you know, get the field position where they First want to be. First and 10 for the Indians from their own 32-yard line. Handoff up the right side to Laneve as he gets past the 40-yard line and he's going to be taken down a yard in front of the first down marker. But guys, John, Anthony, I'd like to thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to come back and call a few plays. It's always an honor when I can come back to a Wayne Hills football game, but nothing beats being in the booth with you guys, and I want to wish you guys the best of luck the rest of the season, and enjoy, enjoy the ride. It's going to be a great one this year, and keep improving in the booth, and keep working hard. Thank you, Dave. All the best of luck in college with all that you do. We're going to see a second and 10 here for the Indians from their own 42-yard line. End around to Laneve, who's got running room, breaks it at the 50, the 45, and is finally taken down at the 40-yard line. The Indians starting to make some plays on the Hills defense. First down and more. Valley is moving the football. Two plays, two first downs. It's been their playmaker all game, Greg Laneve. The junior has really stepped it up. He gets a majority of the carries while Castles gets it inside the normally the red zone. Now, Greg Leneve has done a great job opening in open space, cutting and getting it to the outside. They were giving the ball to Mike Castles in the first half because understandably so because he's a senior and this is his last big, big game of his career as the handoff goes up the middle for not much there. Now was Castles with another unsuccessful run. But they gave the ball to Laneve in the second half, and he's showing what he can do. I mean, he's got speed, this kid. That I mean, Castles is a great runner, but I don't think he has that speed. And they're just going to keep giving it to Laneve if he's going to break off runs like that. Yeah, Laneve's brother was a running back last year, and he had a great year. And, you know, it looks like it runs in the family of running backs. I mean, just a phenomenal outside speed. Second and eight or seven or eight for the Indians. Two receivers tossed to the right, two Castles. Hills pushes him outside, but Castles finds a hole. Picks up a gain of about five yards. Valley sideline's going absolutely crazy because they're actually gaining yards now on Hills. But it's now a pivotal third down from the 30-yard line as now we're going to welcome Joe Rapp back in the, into the booth, filling in the big shoes of David Suntup. So, Joe, you watched the first couple drives of the second half. What's caught your eye? Well, Valley's running game has caught my eye, obviously, as it done for you two. I mean, they're gaining yards and they're getting a field goal range. Even if they don't score a touchdown, they can still put points on the board and make it close. Here we go. Big third and one for Valley, trying to set the tone. Eye formation. They give it to the fullback, and he's met there, but he's going to fall forward for the first down. That was a powerful run by Greg Laneve, who was running up the middle. First and ten Indians. Hogan met him in the hole, but Laneve had just enough strength to fall forward for the first down. Big play there for Wayne Valley as they are now officially driving into Wayne Hills territory at the 28-yard line. This is the first time Hills has had to face this all season. This is what we haven't seen in a long time, John, a competition. Folks, we have a football game. First and 10 from the 27. Savistano under center. An end around again to Laneve. Bounces it outside at the 25. Gets across close to the 20-yard line before he's finally wrestled down. Valley is running the football on Wayne Hills. So it'll be second and short now from about the 20-yard line. All misdirection plays. John, fake it to the up back. Go outside to the other running back. I mean, a great job in misdirection. You get the linebackers moving one way. The other way is all open. Well, Valley has taken the momentum here in the second half. Hills' fans are silent. And usually when it's a close game at halftime, Hills comes out in the second half and blows them away. But like we saw in, other, in past games, Valley has come out and just dominated so far in the early going. Second now and about three yards from the 20 of Wayne Hills. Savistano under center. Handoff up the middle to Castles. Nothing there. Hills finally makes a defensive stand. And the fans now have something to cheer about, setting up a third and short. Well, you guys have to agree with me. That's a big play. I mean, they just need one more stop and let, settle, let the Valley settle for three, and they got to get back on offense and keep doing what they do in the whole season. I mean, really, the, in my mind, the only time Hills has had a competition in the second half where the other team has played at the same level as them was last year in the semifinals against Pascac Valley, where Pascac Valley was actually leading going into the fourth quarter. But other than that, it's usually all Hills in the second half. But here we go, third and two from the 20-yard line. Flags fly. This could be a huge penalty against Valley as it's going to be probably a false start. It would push them back five yards and set up a third and seven as opposed to a very doable third and two. And it is going to be a false start on the Indians. 
So that is something that they cannot afford at this point. A terrible time for a penalty. But it is four down territory here. I don't think they're going to give Matt Dietz a shot at a 42-yard field goal. So it's probably going to be two plays now for Valley to try to get seven yards. And Hills is going to have to make a big stand here. This is a big drive, John. Big drive. Got to make a stand. Hills' fans are chanting defense as a man goes in motion. And Savicedo is going to throw a screen to Leneve on the far side. Has a blocker and he's hit hard for a short gain. And they'll set up fourth down. Great job by Hills' secondary to stay home and defend the screen. Steve was one. Steve Johnson was one step too late on that from absolutely destroying Savistano. He didn't see him. He was coming out of his blind side. Well, Hills brought the pressure, and usually when that happens and they dump off a screen, it's going to be a successful screen. But the speed of Wayne Hills was there to say no. And now, after only a gain of one, it's going to be fourth and five from the Wayne Hills 23-yard line. This is a huge play, definitely the biggest play of this game so far. So here we go, fourth and five for Wayne Valley from the Hills 22. Savistano in the shotgun, four receivers, three to his right. He's going to look to throw to his right. Pressure coming from the outside, yeah. and he's sacked! Sacked by Wayne Hill. Steve Johnson coming around the end to make the play. And Valley turns the ball over on downs. First down for Wayne Hill. A big time play by the Wayne Hills Patriots. What a play. Steve Johnson with a clutch sack. And Quinn will lead his team out onto the field here in the third quarter of play as time ticks down. And Wayne Hills solidifies that 7 0 lead. John, that was absolutely enormous. Same blitz, two plays in a row. They have Johnson coming from the outside and drilling Savistano. Johnson was flying around the corner. Savistano is obviously not a slow kid being a dual threat quarterback. And Johnson closed on him so fast and made a great tackle from behind as Savistano was about to get rid of the football. So here we go. First and 10, Wayne Hills from the 28. Let's see if they can make us drive now. I formation, two receivers to the right. They give it to the up back, and it's going to be Steve Johnson. First down and more across the 40-yard line to the 41. So Hills mixes it up, gives it to Johnson out of the front of the eye, and they pick up a first down on the first play of their drive. John, they're milking him for all he's worth. I mean, a play on defense, forcing a, a, a turnover on downs, and then a first down. He's doing all he can to win this game. Why not? Ride that adrenaline. Give it to the hot hand, and Johnson made Valley pay, play, excuse me, pay on first down. So here we go now, first and 10 for Hills from their own 41-yard line. Uh, same formation, two men in the backfield, and they're going to give it to Dowling this time, who bounced it to the outside, has to room at the 50, breaks it at the 45, the 40, and he's finally going to be taken down inside the 30-yard line at about the 26-yard line. Dowling flying past defenders with under a minute to go in the third quarter. Wayne Hills is now driving on Valley. John, you see what a turnover does. It gets the momentum onto your side, and then you can just build and build and build onto that. This is fun. All, the offenses are trading blow for blow now after it was all defense in the first half. Mikey Blair, guys, BD9, Brian Dallin coming through for me right there. I formation, one receiver to each side this time. Valley brings the pressure, toss left to Dowling, who's going to be tripped up after a gain of about two or three yards. So Dowling with back-to-back -back carries there. And it's now going to be second and about eight yards. That turnover on downs lays the foundation for you to, you know, you know, solidify a drive. I don't know, Anthony, but this is fun. I don't know about you. We haven't seen too many games this competitive in our whole careers here at Wayne Hills. I mean, we're juniors, and I can count maybe two or three games that were close in the second half. So this is a, this is really a blast as time ticks down now to the end of the third quarter. So with that, a great third quarter. No one scored. It's still 7-0 Wayne Hills. They are not used to being the Patriots I'm talking about, only being up by seven going into this, the fourth quarter. So for only the, maybe the second or third times in their careers, the Hills players are going to have to make clutch, pressure-packed plays down the stretch. And Anthony, going into this highly competitive fourth quarter, who do you think could step up for Wayne Hills and make a big play to seal up this football game? This is someone that can make up for what they've been doing wrong all game. It could be Max DiCarvalho. If he could get to the outside, which he has been doing 
pretty well throughout the first, you know, three quarters of the game. He is open. He is beating his man on the outside. He is too fast. All he needs to do is keep running his route and not stop. Right. Maxi Carvalho is my key player going into the game, and he's made plays and he's also blown plays. So if he can step up and make some big plays in the fourth quarter, that is huge for Wayne Hills because Quinn's been on the mark all night. And now if you get Dowling going, that makes the passing game even more vulnerable if you're Wayne Valley because Quinn's going to make his throws, no question about it. So, Joe, if you had to pick one guy, who would be the guy to step up for Hills if, in your mind? I would agree with you. Max DiCarvello, I mean, he's got to start catching He's got to start catching some passes, you know. He's dropped his last couple. I think he might get a touchdown right here on this particular play. So, here we go, breaking the huddle in the fourth quarter. Hills has a second and eight from the Valley 23-yard line. As Coach Olsen, I think, is going to call a timeout because he's walking out onto the field. So there's going to be a stoppage in play as this highly anticipated fourth quarter is about ready to get, get underway. I mean, you just can't say enough about this game. It's lived up to the hype and then some because if it stays close down the stretch, I mean, we have a classic on our hands. John, this is beyond classic. This is cross-town rivalry at its best. I mean, you have the Yankees and the Red Sox. You have Duke and you have UNC. You have Hills, you have Valley. And now these teams are going to be playing more often as they're in the same league. And this is a regular season game. I mean, it seems like a playoff game, like I said before. But the atmosphere is just phenomenal. It's a college atmosphere out here. Tons of people that are going crazy. I mean, this is going to be fun. They can make, meet up again in the playoffs because both of these teams are great teams. But, Anthony, one thing I should mention is they are going to mix up the leagues a little bit next year. So Valley and Hills won't be in the same league. But there's a very good chance they can meet up in an out-of-conference matchup because the, the two athletic directors are talking. You know, John, you know, they've really been shaking up these conferences of late. Here we go, Quinn under center. Play action, pressure there from DeFilippis. Quinn rolls to his right and has his... Nope, it's going to be dropped. He had his man, Steve Johnson, in the flat, but Johnson got hit as he tried to make the catch, and he dropped the ball, and it went out of bounds. So now third and long for Wayne Hills. They're at the 22. Now, Anthony, if they don't get it, Divers missed a 22-yard field goal. Is there any way Olsen gives him a chance at a 38-yarder? John, you got to have confidence in the guys that you, you have on your team. If, if, if he doesn't have confidence for him to go back out there and redeem himself, who does he have confidence in? He has confidence in his offense to make the fourth down play. I mean, Divers has the range from 38 yards, but after missing the first one, I don't think Olsen's going to let him miss another one. So here we go, possibly two down territory for the Patriots. Third and eight from the Valley 23. They have to get to around the 17. Qu Quinn is going to run for it. He has the first down and more getting across inside the 15-yard line to about the 12. A huge run by Mike Quinn. We saw him do it in the first half. He's now doing it in the second half. That's a big time play by number 12, Mike Quinn, the All-State quarterback. That'll move the, the chains inside the 11. They're right around the 10. So Wayne Hills can get a first down without getting a touchdown, but they're knocking on the door now with 11.30 to go in the game. Wayne Hills looking for their 55th consecutive win. And this, is not, this one has not been easy. Quint under center, I formation, two receivers. They're going to hand it off to Dowling up the middle, dragging defenders for a solid gain. Not much was there for Dowling. And they're going to call him down at the seven-yard line, so a gain of three or four yards on first down, making it a reasonable second and medium. You just got to pound it up the middle, John. Pound it up the middle, John. Pound it and pound it and pound it. You got to push it into the end zone. And with Dowling breaking some runs now, I mean, it really makes the play action fake a lot more effective because we saw last week against West Milford the play action work a lot. But Valley hasn't been on it so far. But if Dowling keeps making these runs, the linebackers are going to follow Dowling if the fake is good enough. So here we go now, second and five, second and five or six from the seven yard line of Wayne Valley. Quinn under center again, two men in the backfield. And it's going to be a toss to Dowling to the left, trying to get him some space, but no space for Dowling. Eating up for no gain on the play. Dow Valley's defense is making some plays now as another huge third and six for Wayne Hills. The problem with a toss when you're inside 10 yards is that the, you have no space to get to the outside. You have all your linebackers and, you know, 
defensive backs condensed in such a small area that you can't get it around the, the outside. Right, Brian has so much speed. I think he's better served. I don't know if he had the hole there, but he's probably better served to bounce it to the outside because if you get that kid in open space, he's going to run past everyone. And with only six yards to go, that's an easy touchdown for him if he gets any type of space with momentum going forward. So now here's a big play. Quinn in the huddle, third down, and there's going to be a timeout called by Wayne Hills. Their second charge timeout of the half. So neither team being afraid to use their timeouts in this one. As with 9.48 to go, Hills faces a third down. John, it's going to be interesting to see what they do here on third down and, and six. You know, do you bounce it to the outside? Do you do a bubble screen? You know, the bubble screens have worked tonight for Hills. So is misdirection. It'll be interesting to see what they decide to do. See, in this spot with Quinn's accuracy, a lot of teams would go with a fade route here to a receiver. But Dries and DiCarvalo, not to take a shot against them, but they haven't exactly been 100% reliable tonight. So I think you give Quinn some type of play action fake, a bootleg, something where he can make a big time Mike Quinn caliber play. Because if you give your star a chance to shine down the stretch, he will most likely come through. So a long talk by Coach Olsen trying to inspire his team here in what is an absolutely huge play. But Anthony, I asked you the same question in the first half. If Hills doesn't get it here, do they give it to Divers? You, we, I said yes in the first half, but he missed the field goal. What do you think Coach Olsen's gonna do? Well, I mean, we we have had some forward progress on this drive, and we've got it inside you know, the 10, so a field goal here would be makeable. Third down, Quinn drops back to pass, looks to the right, throws a fade route to the end zone, incomplete. So it'll be fourth down now. Decision time for Coach Olsen. A field goal would make it a two possession game. And I think that's what you have to do, and that's what he is doing. Sending Tim Divers out there, the senior kicker, to make what is probably the biggest kick of his life, to try to make it a two possession game. Seven nothing, obviously, is anyone's game, but 10 nothing is a whole different story. As Quinn will hold it for Divers. It's going to be a 24 yard kick. He missed hit from 22 earlier. So let's see if he can hit a 24 yarder just inside the left hash. The snap is good, the hold is good, the kick is up. And it is no good. Tim Divers misses another field goal and Valley is still in this ball game. They are hanging around. I am absolutely astonished. Absolutely, I, I'm, I'm stunned for words. I mean, I'm speechless. You have to feel for Divers, I mean. There's nothing you can say. This this crowd is silent here on our side of the field. Valley's band and fans are being as loud as ever. And that took all the air out of Wayne Hills' sideline. I mean, th their body language just went down the tubes after that miss. So now Valley's gonna have to try to take advantage. Here we go, first and 10, Savas Stando bobbles the snap. He's gonna throw deep down the field. He's got his man, it's Varelli who makes the catch. Dowling is gonna try to take him down, and he drops the ball. It's a fumble, picked up by Wayne Hills. They're gonna take it back, 20 yard line, and he's gonna be taking that at the 20. Anthony Varelli fumbled the football. He comes back to make the tackle, but Troy Zafino picked it up, and it's now Wayne Hills' ball. You know, the block went up right behind Varelli, busted that ball out, picked it up and ran for an extra 15 yards. That's the play that gets you back in the game after a turnover on downs like that. You're right, Anthony, that was the block, but great play all around. Savistano finally made a pass, but Varelli coughed it up, and Hills now has the ball with the lead. Fellas, that's the definition of a game changer right there. Big play by the Patriots defense. No question, those are the kind of plays you remember years from now when you think about a big game, because although there were no points involved, Valley would have had a chance to tie the game in the fourth quarter against the mammoth Wayne Hills Patriots. But no, Varelli coughs it up, like I said, and Hills has the ball with a chance to run down the clock and put the nail in the coffin. <laughs> John, that's as lucky as it gets. I mean, Savistano's first absolutely beautiful throw down the field. Varelli, again, a phenomenal athlete. Quinn under center, hands it off to Dowling. Nothing there. Tackled for a loss is Brian Dowling. So Valley gets something to cheer about after their fans were silenced on that last play. So the first negative run of the half for Dowling is it's going to be second and about 13 there. 
So Valley's defense not letting that fumble affect them, and they were all in the backfield. Maybe Hills' line feeling the effect of coming right back on the field. But just like that, Hills is faced with a long second down play now. Dries and Di Carvalho to the right. Dowling split wide to the left. Di Delectis in the backfield. Quinn under center. Drops back the pass. Looks to Dowling. Throws a slant to Dowling. And he drops the football. There was a hit made there by Castles on Dowling. Castles has been in Dowling's back pocket all night. But once again, Quinn put the ball there. Play just could not be made. John, he has dropped a few balls tonight. Actually, not a few, a lot of balls tonight. A lot of balls thrown in his direction, and Coach Olsen has to have confidence in him to keep going back and back. It's time for Mike Quinn to make a play. Third and 12 for Wayne Hills from their own 33-yard line. Both sides of fans are on their feet and cheering. Both cheerleaders are raising their arms, asking for a play to be made, but the scoreboard has gone out. So, they finally notice it now. So the definition of melodramatic <laughs> as now everyone's quiet. So it just gives both sides a chance to think about this big third down play. John, looking at it now, and it's gone out again. It, it's gone out again. But looking at this situation now and looking at it last year, the playmakers are different. We had D. Bianca, who used to go outside and sprint and get, get touchdowns. We don't have that guy necessarily this year. Here we go. The skilled players will have to step up. One side's about to erupt. Quinn drops back the pass, throws a screen to, down, to Johnson, and Johnson's gonna be tackled just shy of the first down. A nice design play, but Valley's defense was there. Great play by Pete Savistano on defense to make a first down saving tackle, and Wayne Hills is going to have to punt on fourth and four. John, so close, three yards shy of the first down. He almost had one extra block, and you know he could have gone all the way. Now we'll see if Divers can make up again for two missed kicks and a muffed punt. Well, Divers came out on the kickoff in the second half and hit a bomb after he missed the field goal in the first half. Maybe he can do the same thing on a punt. Snap is good. Divers with plenty of time, kicks it away. Solid kick. We'll take a Hills bounce at the 28 yard line and James Hogan will touch it up at the 23. So that first down play for Valley, eaten up for a gain of about one or two. Host of linebackers there including Russell Pekarski. So second and eight now for Wayne, for Wayne Valley as the clock ticks down under seven and a half minutes to go with Hills leading by seven. <laughs> It doesn't get much bigger than this. A defensive stop here could end the game, you know. A punt and it could be over. A turnover could be over. But Valley does have an opportunity with seven minutes left to drive down the field. Savistano breaks the huddle with three receivers, one man in the backfield. In the shotgun, Wayne Hills fakes blitz. Savistano throws to the right, complete across the 30. It'll be about just shy of the first down. Mike Tallarico, the junior, made the catch, a gain of about seven or eight. Tallarico went back a yard and it cost him. It's gonna be third and about one or two from the 30 yard line. Here we go, the crowd are gonna be on their feet again. It's time for someone to step up on third down. I wouldn't be surprised if they go back to misdirection here. It's been working all night, the outside is open. I would expect to see a blitz here from Wayne Hill. Put all the pressure on Savistano's arm because it has not proven to be successful tonight. Here we go, third and two from the 30 yard line. They need to get to the 32. It's a pitch to the left. Castles has it and he stopped. A flag flies. The ball came out, it was after Castles went down. He was stopped about a yard short, but it's all gonna come down to the flag. It will probably be a holding on Valley. If so, Olsen will most likely decline it. But if Valley's close enough, that's a tough decision. And it will be a holding on the Indians. But the runner, Castles, got close to the first down. So rather than risking Valley making a fourth down play, Olsen's going to push him back 10 yards. So it's going to be now third and 11 from the 20 yard line. As it's a much tougher play now for Valley, but they do get a second chance. Well, now it's third and 12 or third and 11, and it, much longer than fourth and two. So I think a good decision there by Coach Olsen. 
This is where Savstown has got to show his arm to these Patriot fans, man. He's got to complete this pass. It's a must. He is the senior leader for this Wayne Valley team, and it's time for him to step up because he has been off the target all night, with the exception of that last pass. Here we go. Third and 11, four receivers for Valley. Savistano back to pass, and he's going to be sacked by Russell Pekarski in the backfield. Pekarski with a huge sack, and Valley will be forced to punt inside their own 15-yard line. A huge stop for the Patriot defense. So with time ticking now at 5.30 to go, Hills has a chance to run out the clock. The juniors today have really stepped up in Nick Massey, Brian Dowling, Russell Pekarski, Mike Dries. They've just all done a phenomenal job. Fourth and forever for Valley. Savistano ready to punt it away. He's got to get as many yards on this as he can. Dowling and Dries back to return the punt. Savistano standing at his own goal line. Snaps good. Savistano gets it away. It's a great kick. Phenomenal kick. Backs Dowling all the way up it, to his 40. It's going to bounce inside the 20. What a kick by Pete Savistano. That's a, by my math, a 73 yard punt. Wow, John. I mean, the wind is blowing that way. And, you know, he got great distance on it and height. And it might have caught, got caught up in the wind, but he just got a phenomenal roll. And, it, you know, bounced an extra 15 yards. By my math, that's a 71 or 72 yard punt. That was phenomenal. You don't see that at all. That ball went about a good 60 yards in the air and then bounced another 15. You know, Anthony's key player uh, today was Tim Divers, he's not doing so well, but Pete Savsano showing his punting prowess. So Hills, with their biggest chance to put Valley away, hand off to the fullback, D. Delectis, he'll go up the middle. Not much there, picks up about two yards on the play. I'm sorry, that was Steve Johnson on the carry, excuse me. So with time ticking at 4.50 to go, Hills has second and eight from their own 17. But if you're Hills, do you try to run the clock out and have faith in your running game? Or do you keep going for the juggler of Wayne Valley and let Quinn throw the football? You know, that's a great question, John. I mean, you, you have to play it safe. Turnover could change the game. But, you know, a, a stop and a turnover could, could end the game also. End around to Dowling, gets it to the 30, almost the 30, crosses the 25 to about the 26. He's going to be about a yard short of the first down. Nice play by Hills to stack the line and make it look like it was going to be a run between the tackles and giving it to the speedy Dowling on the sweep, who was able to get a solid gain on the play and set up a makeable third down. Makeable, it needs to be, you know, it, it needs to be had. I mean, if they don't get this third down and they have to go for it on fourth down and, you know, risk a turnover on downs, it could be lethal for the Wayne Hills Patriots. A first down here could potentially end the game. 3.51 and counting. Both crowds on their feet. Valley needs a stop. Third and one for Hills. They can really send a message to Valley here and put this game at a much tougher, make this win a lot tougher for Valley if they can get a first down here. They're going to milk it down to 343, and Olsen's going to call a timeout. I, I think that's his second. I said second before, but one of those was an official timeout. So and Jolene good? just went into the game. Good? Brought in extra blocker. Welcome back to Wayne Valley High School for the finale of a tremendous game. Buckle up, folks. 3.43 to go. Hills facing a third and one from their own 27-yard line. Valley down by seven. Hills is up seven, nothing. It's been a defensive battle. They're going to stack the line. Extra tight end. Joey Lane in the game, a tight end. One receiver all the way to the right. Dowling, the go-to guy in the backfield. Quinn under center. Here we go. Hand off. Dowling is going to try to jump over the pile. He's going to be close. I think he has it. They're going to stop the clock and either measure or give Hills the first down. They haven't signaled it yet. Come on, baby. Move those chains. It looks like they're going to measure here. They were about to give Hills the first down, but they're going to make sure they got it and bring out the chains here. This is a huge measurement. If they don't get it, coach, it's going to take all the guts Coach Al Olsen has to go for it. On fourth down in your own territory, only up by seven. Swimming with sharks, John. Swimming with sharks. So here comes the pivotal measurement. 
first down, Wayne Hills. So there you go. You can pretty much mark another minute or two off the clock. So Valley's gonna need to come up clutch. They need to make a play down the stretch. So first down and 10 for the Patriots from the 28. 3.38 to go. They'll most likely run the football. Even if Valley stops them, who cares? Valley's gonna have a minute left to try to score seven points and go down the field against a great defense. Two receivers, one to each side. I formation again. It's gonna be a toss to Dowling along the right side. Tries to turn the corner, and he's met hard by a host of Valley linebackers. A gain of about four on the play. So second and six for the Patriots with 3-10 and counting to go. You know, not a bad idea trying to bounce it to the outside, use as much clock as you possibly can. You know, a good run there by Dowling after the initial hit, getting a few extra yards. I should have to say, for Valley, they've done a great job defending Brian Dowling. He has not gotten a, a great chunk of yardage, except for the one that he almost took to the house, but called back because he stepped out of bounds. Yeah, Valley has been the first team to be able to contain Brian. And like they say, you can't stop stars, you just have to hope to contain them, and they've done that tonight. Toss to the left to Dowling, they're gonna try the other side now, and he is met in the backfield for a loss. A loss of three or four on the play. Valley's linebackers getting in the backfield once again. So now it's gonna be third and long for Hills with under two and a half minutes to go. Do you throw the football? Again, this is a tough choice. Throwing the football could risk a turnover. I mean, Mike Quinn is a phenomenal quarterback. I don't even know if he has an interception on the year. But the fact that it could happen, and you know, for all we know, it could be returned back to the house. So I think play it safe, try to run it up the gut, use as much clock as you can, and maybe even run it up the gut twice. This might be two down territory to run out the clock. To be exact, there's 2.35 to go in the game. Valley's side is trying to get behind their team as much as they can. A stop would keep them in the game, but, a, but if Hills gets the first down, I mean, this game's all but over. Valley does have their timeouts left, so they would be able to stop the clock on with timeouts, but if Hills gets the first down here, I mean, it's gonna be awfully tough for Valley to get back into it. They need the first here, John. Big first down. I mean, my prediction was totally wrong. I, I predicted a 35-point blowout and, you know, Scoring coming out of the half, you know, but you know, Valley has stayed in this game, and you know, Hills has battled also. But it, it comes down to situations like this that build a championship. Three receivers set. Quinn bubble screen to Dowling. Dowling's gonna try to make a run. Not much there. He's pushing defenders as hard as he can, but he's not gonna get there. Valley gets the stop. Gets the stop they need. Fourth down for Hills. They're gonna have to punt. You know, I have to question Coach Chris Olson's play calling. I mean, they shouldn't be throwing these screen passes on third and long. They got to be throwing it for the first down, you know? Well, Dowling can break a run at any time, so I think all Olsen wanted to do was get him the ball in space. As there's going to be a timeout called by the Coach Olsen, I believe, before this punt gets kicked away with 2.27 to go. So that's the amount of time Savistano's going to have to lead his team down the field. He's a great athlete, like we've said, but he has not had the game he wanted to tonight. And he's a great baseball player, great football player. He's a senior now. This is his last year. This is really his spotlight. This is his time to shine for Wayne Valley. And if he is, leads his team on a drive here and ties it up, what he did before that means nothing. And he's going to remember it as a hero rather than a guy that played an average game. You know, this might be something weird for Wayne Hills to think about, but their starters have not played this deep into a game in a long time. I mean, they, they're used to blowouts. They're used to the second string, third string guys being in the beginning of the second half. So, you know, this might be a, a, an unusual situation for them. So Divers is going to kick it away on fourth and five from their own 31. Anthony Varelli back to return the punt, trying to make up for the fumble he had earlier. Valley might send everyone, and they do. Pressure on Divers, he gets it away. Good kick from him. Varelli's gonna let it bounce at the 35. Takes a great Wayne Hills bounce, and it's finally gonna be down to the 24 yard line. So a clutch long punt from Divers. He's had a good game other than the missed field goals, and obviously that's what everyone's gonna talk about. But here we go. Two minute drill for Pete Savistano and the Indians. Not an easy task against the great Wayne Hills defense. They're gonna have to break a big play. 
So with 2.15 to go, Valley begins to drive at their own 24-yard line. They're going to go misdirection, misdirection, and you know what? Throw a little more misdirection in there because that's what's been working for them all game, and they're not going to stray away from it. Valley breaks the huddle, but the crowd's now really into this one. Two minutes to go, five receivers set. Savistano drops back, rolled out, under pressure. He breaks free, he's gonna scramble for it. Gets across the 25, tackled at the 30 yard line. Nice scramble by Savistano. That's the first time he's been able to elude pressure all night. Picks up about seven or eight yards on the play. Good job by him to make it a reasonable second down. Clock's running though, John. I mean, you can scramble all you want. If you don't get out of bounds, it's not gonna be worth anything. Valley does have timeouts to work with. 1.48 to go. Five receivers again. Savistano looks to his left this time. Pressure comes. He gets away. He's going to throw it deep down the field. And it's going to be incomplete. Intended for Anthony Varelli. The coverage was there. Varelli could not haul it in over the defender, who I believe was, Ronnie, was Mike Dries. So third down and four now for the Indians. They have to get this first down in the next two plays or the game's over. John, I haven't seen, seen a vertical leap like that since Justin Horahan graduated. That was incredible. And they're wearing the same numbers, Horahan and Varelli, both number 14. I agree, I had flashbacks of Horahan there too, but here we go now. Third and four from the 30. Seven nothing Patriots. They don't normally have games this close. Five receivers once again, no, four receivers, excuse me. Savistano is going to throw once again. He's going to look to his right now. He's has some time. Gets away from a defender. Shakes him and breaks it at the 35 across the 40-yard line. Nice run by Pete Savistano to pick up a clutch first down. That's a big play by Savistano. That's by far his best run of the whole game. He's getting the crowd on their feet over there for Valley. As now Valley officially has a drive moving now. First down. They really needed that. That's big, that's big. I mean, it's touchdown and touchdown only. Field goals aren't gonna do you any good. You know, they gotta drive. Savistano did a great job to get out of bounds there and stop the clock. He rolls to his right now. He's pressure coming from Pekarski. Savistano gets it away. Complete for a gain of about 11 yard lines. A gain of 11 to the 45, excuse me. So first down, Wayne Valley. Savistano is coming alive. Hogan had him on the outside, and he was running away from it, and he barely got the pass off before getting taken down. Hogan had Savistano halfway to the ground, and somehow he got rid of the football. He is coming up with all creative plays as the clock ticks down with 1.08 to go. Valley has to have a sense of urgency. Savistano looks to throw, throws it to the right side. It's a deep ball, and it's going to be incomplete. Two defenders there for Wayne Hills. I believe it was DeBlanc and Dries. They're picking on Dries, but Varelli couldn't bring it in again. It would have been a tough play, but the clock stops in second and ten. Guys, this is a game of inches. Varelli's come close to three or four balls today for a touchdown, possibly. And, you know, with Savistano being a shorter guy, he couldn't see much there because Hills was bringing the pressure. He threw it up to his go-to guy in Varelli, just overshot him by about half a yard. So here we go. Dropping back the pass to Savistano, going right again, the same play to Varelli, down the sideline, and it's going to be incomplete. It looked like the interception might have been hauled in, but it was not to be, as it's going to be third and 10 now for Savistano with 52 seconds to go. They're going for the deep ball three times in a row. They had something going when they were just scrambling up the middle and trying to bust it to the outside. They're, they're straying away from what's been, you know, working for them. And, you know, the deep ball hasn't been there all night. The coverage has been fantastic by Mike Dries, Matt the Block, Brian Dowling, and they're trying to force it into coverage, and it's not working. See, if Valley had done this with no timeouts, it would make sense. But they have timeouts to work with, so they can pretty much do whatever they want. Simon Stano in the shotgun. Pressure comes. Rolls to his left, trying to break free. He's going to run for it. The 40, 35, 30, and finally taken down there. Nice tackle by a Patriot defender. And that's going to be a first and 10 for Wayne Valley. Dries with the tackle, but Savage Stano making plays down the stretch. Another first down for the Indians. Why they stop the clock? They stop the clock for the first down as Savage Stano will spike it now. So with 39 seconds to go, Valley's driving on hills, trying to tie up the game. So it's going to be a time. So Valley clocked the ball. 
Second and 10 from the Hills 30 yard line. They need to stop here, John. I, I, I mean, that's that's what they had been working for them earlier. They, the runs up the middle, and now they go back to it, and it's working again. They're going to probably try to throw it in the end zone here on first down. Five receivers. What else is new? Savistano under pressure. Breaks a sack again. He's trying to get free. He's going to throw a deep ball. He's got a man. Touchdown, Wayne Valley. There's a flag on the play. We will see what it is. Valley's going nuts. They think they tied the game. We'll see what the call is. Hills is bewildered as it's gonna be a penalty on Valley. It's a penalty on the Indians. It'll come back. Still Wayne Hills' lead. Looks like there's also an injury on the field. Number 31 for Wayne Valley. Wow, that is a game-changing call. They said Savistano was beyond the line of scrimmage when he let it go, which he looked like he was. So just a huge play as they're going to attend to the injured player, giving both sides a chance to rest up for this, these last couple plays. It'll be third and 10, or it'll be either third and 10 or second and about 15. It's going to be second and 15 as they mark off the yardage. <laughs> from the 33-yard line. John, that was almost the demise of Wayne Hills right there. That was that was eerily close to, to, to the end. But <laughs> lucky lucky break for Wayne Hills, and they get the call. That would have been the biggest play in Wayne Valley football history if they had made that catch, especially if they would have went on to pull the upset. But it was not to be just a shocking call. I mean, if you're a ref, that's a gutsy call to make. If Wayne Hills ever needs a break, they got it right there. And if they ever needed a break, they needed one right there. So the teams take the field once again as they're going to help, I believe, Castles off the field. Actually, I'm not quite sure who that is. As the scoreboard has gone out once again, we'll see how long it takes them to realize it. And it's back. 30.3 to go. It wasn't Castles that got hurt, excuse me. He split wide to the left. Hills shows a blitz, and they come. Savistano under pressure, and he's sack, sack, and he's gonna be taken back all the way to the 45 yard line. James D. Delectus shot through the hole, and it's fourth and forever for Valley. Clock ticking, 15 seconds to go. They have no timeouts. They can't spike it. It's fourth down. Eight seconds to go. Seven, six, five, four, three. Savisano gets it off. He's got to throw a Hail Mary. Looks down the field. Chucks it as far as he can in the coverage. Incomplete. Wayne Hills wins the game by a final score of 7 0. I don't believe what I just saw. John, that was absolutely enormous. The sack by James D. Delect is coming up the middle. They had to push the linebacker in the final drive of Wayne Valley, and they finally had brought the extra guy up the middle, and he got right to the quarterback. In what has been the best game we've ever seen here at Wayne Hills, the Wayne Hills Patriots defeat their crosstown rivals, the Wayne Valley Indians, by a final score of 7-0. Hill scored on the first drive, and that was it. The defense is dominated from there, and no one was able to put points on the board. What really changed this game was the turnovers for Wayne Valley. They would be driving and driving and getting down the field, and then they would force throws or force, force runs to the outside, and they would fumble or throw up a pick, and that's what you can't do against Wayne Hills because they don't make mistakes. Just a tremendous game. What else can you say? In front of probably, I don't know, 8,000 people. Just an amazing atmosphere here at Wayne Valley. I mean, if the, the, there's been so many big plays in this game. You can't pinpoint one play. But if you had to, what would it be? You know, a pivotal play in this game was that sack by James Niedelectis. They were driving down the field, 
and all of a sudden, D'Electus blitz up the middle and sacks him. That really changed. Well, obviously, there was only a matter of seconds left in the game, but for something like that to happen with them driving, it was fantastic. Well, I think there's a lot of plays of the game, and mostly by Russell Bukarski. He has sacked Savistano a bunch of times. He came up big tonight. Yeah, the junior linebackers played a phenomenal game. Massey, Pekarski, Hogan, whoever else got in there. But I mean, I would go with Anthony's play, the sack, but only, I'm not going to, only because the, they had the ball at the 30 yard line, so it would have been a tough way to score anyway. I'm going to go with the fumble by Anthony Varelli because Valley had all the momentum at that point coming off the turnover, and Varelli made a huge play. It was the first big throw Savistano made. And they would have had the ball inside the Wayne Hills 20 with a chance to tie it up, and Varelli dropped the ball. To me, that's the biggest play of this game. But now let's go with the player of the game. What guy, besides the obvious players, what guy do you stepped up? You know, I, this is this is might be like a sleeper to most people, but Nick Massey coming off an injury had a phenomenal game, had multiple sacks and tackles, and really, you know, stopped everything that came to him. He was a brick wall right in the middle, and you know, just. Coming off an injury, it's not easy. It's not easy. You have to progress your way back, and he did just that, and he was ready for this game. Well, I mentioned it before. Russell Bukarski, the junior linebacker, had a tremendous game. Had three or four sacks. It really changed the momentum at points of the game. There's a ton of guys you could give it to in big games, big players step up, and just about everyone did it for Wayne Hills today. But, guys, this is only – the first one. We have a sequel next week against St. Joe's. That's going to be such a great game. I mean, how can Wayne Hills rebound from this and come out with all the intensity in the world next week? Well, now they know not to play down to their opponent because Wayne Hills was the stronger team going into this game and coming out of this game. But the fact is, you have to play with your heart in the game no matter what. And, you know, they did that today, but they have to come out with even more motivation knowing that they could be one of the top teams in the country if they beat St. Joe's next week. Well, we, we all know that they can't play like this against a Catholic school in St. Joe's because they're going to be ready, their fans are going to be ready, and we have to be ready and the team has to be ready, and it all starts in practice on Monday. Yeah, St. Joe's owns Wayne Valley a thank you because they play their hearts out and they really made Wayne Hills look vulnerable tonight. We never see this. I mean, you could count on our on one hand how many times Wayne Hills has had a close game like this. And to see it in such a big stage is shocking to some. But I mean, Wayne Hills is going to have to bounce back quick. St. Joe's starts tomorrow. You, you cannot recover from this game for a second because St. Joe's is going to bring all they have next week. And Wayne Hills is going to be in for another, probably another close one next week. But that'll just about do it here from Wayne Valley High School. For everyone on the crew who did a great job tonight, our cameraman, John Giordello, and we have to give credit to the Katine brothers who hung here for several hours, saving our spot in the bleachers. And of course, David Suntup who came in and called for us, and he's been so supportive of the TV club ever since he's graduated. And of course, for our announcers, Anthony Scadillo and Joe Rapp, I'm John Vitas. This has been it from Wayne Valley High School. The Patriots beat the Indians by a score of 7-0. We'll see you next week against St. Joe's from Wayne Hills High School. See you then.